Welcome to Bush Memorial Stadium, where today the St. Louis Cardinals with a two and four record play host to the Philadelphia Eagles, who come in here five and one in 1979. Hi everybody, I'm Gary Bender along with Sonny Jurgensen. Look at this, Sonny. The Eagles are five and one. They're tied with three other teams for the best record in pro football. They've won four in a row. Their best start since 1961, but they're underdogs today. Two and a half point underdogs, too. They are a mystery team. The Cardinals are a mystery team. One week they play well, one week they play bad, badly. And you know, I think with the return of, of uh, Neil, yes, at guard is the big thing. With him coming back in there at guard, they're going to be a good football team now. And I think that's a big problem, you know, that they like the fact that he's back. He's going to provide the uh, protection for Hart. With good protection, he's an excellent quarterback. Now we're going to showcase two of the outstanding runners. Rookie Otis Anderson is second in the NSC. Wilbert Montgomery is third in the conference. And Sonny, last week they both had 100-yard days. Well, I tell you what, Montgomery had scored four touchdowns against the Redskins. He's an excellent running back. I'm looking forward to watching both of them run. Montgomery's teammate, Harold Carmichael, comes in here with at least one catch in 102 consecutive games. And he's had three 100-yard games against the Cardinals. And uh, I'm looking for him to continue his streak. On the other hand, Pat Tilly's underrated for the Cardinals. Jim Hart really likes him. Well, he hasn't had Mel Gray to go to, and I think that's one reason he's gone to him so often this year. He's a hard worker, and he's had good days against the Eagles. All right, Tilly with seven catches against the Eagles last year. As Bud Wilkinson, along with Dick Vermeil, the two men who will be directing these teams today, and the Eagles will be kicking off as the Cardinals have won the toss, elected to receive. Tony Franklin, boy, what a job he's been doing this year. Eight and nine in the field goal kicking department. And the ball has blown off the tee. Interestingly enough, the Cardinals have won nine of the last ten games against Philadelphia, and the ball blows off the tee again. So Franklin will have to reset it once again. That might be one of the big factors why St. Louis has the favorite nod here this afternoon. Last year, the Eagles broke a nine-game losing streak in Bush Stadium as the Cardinals had dominated them. And then Bud Wilkinson also won in Philadelphia last year the first win that he had in the NFL. Franklin kicking off. And on the far side, this will be Roy Green. He leads the NFC in kickoff returns. And Green to the 24-yard line. And let's set it now offensively for St. Louis. There's Morrison Anderson. Anderson, 109 yards last week. Gray will start today. He's back, and they say that he's been running well in practice all week. And that offensive line, well, it's had some problems injury-wise. Bostic playing a place for the All-Pro, Dan Deardorff. And there's a guy, number 68, Steve, the name I had trouble with. He is the guy that's really solidified this line. He weighs in at 260 pounds, and there's Jim Hart, the quarterback. First down from the 24 for the Big Red as he gives off to Otis Anderson and Anderson across the 25 to the 27-yard line. And Sonny, let's take a look now at the number four rated defense in the NFC. Boy, what a job Club Humphrey has done. Well, they have, and Harrison is his place to run as well as anybody. Got 10 sacks already. Good defensive line. Charlie Johnson's underrated, and Terry Totalo, he's the guy playing in place of the injured Bill Berge. Saw Bunning coming over here with ice on his knee. He says he's ready. Boy, he ices it up 14 <laughs> hours a day. Now look at that secondary. They've had at least one interception in the last seven games. The Eagles are playing well. Here's a give again to Wayne Morris, and Morris to the 31-yard line. It's going to be about three yards short of the first down. Carl Hairston, the man who we mentioned, had 10 sacks making the tackle. I guess if there's one key for both these teams, Sonny, is that they both need to establish their running game. Well, I, you go into the game thinking that, and I'm sure they, the Cardinals would like to be able to run to help Jim Hart go back and throw the ball. Jim Hart off on slow footing, but he had an excellent game last week against Houston. And I think he attributes that to Terry Steve's return. Third down, three for St. Louis, just underway from Bush Stadium. This is Anderson trying to go for the first down, and he's got the first down, and then some. Good second effort by the rookie out of Miami of Florida. It's first down, moving the ball out to the 37-yard line. I tell you, I was talking to Bud Wilkinson about this young man down on the field before the game, and I said, has he adapted to the professional game? He said, he is going to be a great one. And you can see right here the kind of ability he has breaking tackles and fighting for the extra yards to pick up the first down. He's averaging just under five yards a carry, 590 yards coming into this game. First down, St. Louis from the 37th. 
Hart. Off to Morris, and Morris, who had 81 yards last week, moves to the 45-yard line. Carl Hairston made the stop. He's two yards short of the first down. Boy, that offensive line of the Eagles, they're running right at the, of the uh, Cardinals. They're running right at the strength of the Eagles and doing a job on them. Give Keith Wortman a lot of credit because he did a good block. He said it many times, as you look at 62, he's really underrated, isn't he? He is. Hey. He, he does a good job against everybody he plays. He shuts them out. He did a good job against Bacon a couple of weeks ago. Second down and two from the 45. Anderson again on the sweep. Cuts it, and he pays for that one a little bit. Moving the ball to the 47-yard line, and it looks like he's going to be just short of the first down. Terry Totalo, he's the man that made the stop. There's Jim Hart. Boy, what a career this man has had. He, this year, had his 10th 300-yard day. But the thing that bothers him, Sonny, is he's thrown 11 interceptions this year. It is. I told him he was spoiled. I said, you've been spoiled with that great protection all this time. Now you're throwing under a little heat. And he says, you know, you're right. <laughs> One quarterback talking to another, right? And so it's going to be third down, a short yard to go. The Cardinals operating just across their own 45-yard line. Theotis Brown is coming to the backfield. Up the middle, and it looks like he got it. The Otis Brown, the rookie out of UCLA, his forward progress will pick up the first down. And this is what the Cardinals wanted to do was right off the bat get some field position. In other games, Sonny, prior to last week, their first series always left them in a hole. That's right. They, get, they got the ball in good field position now, and they haven't had to put it up yet. You know, looking at the Eagles and having done their game last week, Gary, I noticed last week they were very confident going into the game. They were cautious today. I think very cautious coming in here to play this Cardinal team. I thought last week they were very loose. Back to throw hard his first pass of the game. He's got his man to the ground, and Brown has a first down catch to the 35 yard line. Brown with the catch, and the Cardinals are on the move. Good safe throw here, and you see the protection he gets. Excellent protection going back, throwing the football, and finds Theotis Brown right down the middle. No one around him. Another first down for the Cardinals. The Otis Brown last week caught a 16-yard pass off of a fake punt, which really kept that game going against Houston. That was a 16-yard game also. So he's kind of getting in a rut there. Give up the middle. This is Brown again, getting a lot of work in the early going of this game. Brown to the 33-yard line. As they're alternating the backs back there. Brown, I think an interesting story about him, Sonny, even though he's a rookie, they use him on those goal line situations. He scored four touchdowns showing the confidence they have in him hanging on to the football. Well, he's got that size, too, 6'2", 225. Being that big, uh, they can afford to take advantage of him. There it is, second and seven. This is the initial series of the game. The Cardinals moving very effectively. Wayne Morris, oh, is he hit by Carl Hairston? He really was hit at the 30-yard line. Let's pick up that one. Boy, you can see why this man's such a great football player. Carl Harrison, watch his hit on Mark. Really came around and nailed it. A little help from Claude Humphrey also. Kind of sandwiched him on that one. <laughs> Third down and five as now the Eagles will change their defensive alignment. They bring out Charlie Johnson and John Bunning, and they get in there. Dennis Harrison, that fine second-year man out of Vanderbilt. They'll move Carl Harrison to a tackle. Back to throw on third and five. Hart, pressure put on by Harrison. He gets away. Flag on the play. Anderson can't hang on. A flag was thrown. Jim Hart got rattled pretty good on that one around the head. Well, he did. The rush really gets him. Dennis Harrison coming in from his backside. Watch him here. You see him coming to the picture right there. And he's the one that Jim has to duck, comes up throwing again, kept his composure, almost had a completion to Anderson. But we might have a penalty. It might be a holding call. <laughs> That's what it is, holding Jim Tunney. And, of course, the Eagles will refuse that. It'll bring up the fourth down. I tell you, Hart that time took a pretty good shot around the head, but he showed me something. He wants to throw more to the backs. Last week, they threw a lot to Otis Anderson. In fact, he had four catches last week for 58 yards. And here comes a field goal attempt. This will be a 48-yard attempt by Steve Little. Little coming in here. It's two of three in the field goal department. Holding Roger Worley, Little's kick is going to be short. And wide to the right, and the Cardinals in the combined kicking of Mike Wood and Steve Little are now four of 11 for the year. It's been plaguing them throughout the course of this year, and just this week, 
They waved. Mike Wood handled Gabe, rather, Steve Little, the entire kicking responsibility. And Little now is the only kicker in the National Football League that does it all. Yeah, he's like two out of four now, isn't he? Uh, two out of four, and the team is four of 11. So that's been an area that has haunted him. So the 38-yarder is short, and now from the 30-yard line, first down for Philadelphia. Jaworski giving off to Montgomery. And Montgomery, who had 127 yards last week, has dropped. Let's set now the offense. There's Montgomery. Harris, boy, he had a good game last week. He is in shape, they say, for the first time. And Carmichael will watch him very closely. Boy, well, keep your eye on number 84, too. Crepley leading the tight ends and receptions in the entire football league. Almost a 20-yard average. And there's that offensive line, and you can't say enough for them. Well, they did a job against Washington last week. Payroll playing in place of the injured Wade Key. Second down, nine for Philadelphia. There's Jaworski. He is ranked third in the NFC. Run back, a little delay to Leroy Harris. He's in trouble. Bob Pollard is there. Also, Charlie Davis. That did not fool anyone on that play. Let's set defensively now the Cardinals. And they're ranked fifth overall. Bob Pollard, very steady defensive end. Uh, Pollard has five sacks. He's a leading sacker. And uh, they don't give up many yards. They give them up grudgingly, don't they? They sure do. And back in the middle, they have lost Tim Carty, their leading tackler. And Kurt Allerman's playing there. And that secondary, Ken Stone has four interceptions already. Third down, eight yards to go. Operating from the 33, Philadelphia. Jaworski, protection is excellent. And Carmichael, intercepted. <laughs> Worley with the interception, and he's going to be down at the 41-yard line. And that is Rogers' first interception of the year. Carmichael reached up, but he could not control the pass. And the Cardinals come away with it in their eighth interception of the 1979 season. So St. Louis has the football with 7.40 to go, first quarter. The Big Red Line. They're having a competition at halftime here between the Big Red Line and the Liberty Bells of Philadelphia. On the 40-yard line after the interception by Worley. First quarter score, Pittsburgh leading Cincinnati 3 to nothing. Matt Barr on a 46-yard field goal. Hart delivers the ball on the target to Pat Tilly, and Tilly has the first down catch to the 47-yard line. That is his 21st catch of the year. Boy, what a fine receiver he is. Smart call this time going on first down, not letting the Eagles get in their rushing team of Harrison and the, the people they bring in to rush the passer. Doing it on first down really helped him, and he found Tilly open for a first down. Tilly, as we said at the top of the show, had seven catches against Philadelphia last year. Here's Otis Anderson trying to go wide. He's got a block from Bob Young, the 40. He's got the first down to the 35-yard line. And evidently, Sonny, they think they can run wide today. They're keeping after it, aren't they? Boy, they are. They, didn't. they came into the game, I think, on a high note. Coming from behind to beat Houston last week. They feel like they're a much better football team than their record indicates, and they're playing like it here in this first quarter. That was a 12-yard run following the 13-yard pass completion to Pat Tilly, and the Cardinals are on the move. They had a 48-yard field goal go awry, but they're right back in there knocking on the door again from the 35. We have Tilly along with Gray split out. This is Gary Paris, the tight end in motion. Hart back to throw. He's got Anderson. Anderson to the 30. A lot of running room, and then he is hit hard at the 30. So at the 30-yard line, it's going to bring up a second down, and we have a man right now a little bit shaken up. It looks like Jim Hart, too. Yes, it is. I don't know what happened to Jim Hart then. But look at him. He's, he's hurting. He sure is. It looks like his knee or ankle. Oh, boy. Boy, they, look at this. You know, he wears a brace on that knee, as you can obviously see. Johnny Omohandro, the trainer out there with him. And Steve Pazarkowitz will come in. He's only thrown nine passes this year. He's the number one draft pick in 77. Just about the time they were getting that offense looking as, as impressive as it has all year, their leader's down. Boy, that's for sure. They can ill afford to lose Jim Hart. to try to find out exactly what it is, if it's knee, Let's go back. Jim Stillman, our director, has it. Let's see what happened. See right here, coming from the blind. Oh, there it uh, is. Looks like it's got to be ankle. Well, where he got hit from behind and kind of rolled over. Well, Pizarkowitz inherits the chore quarterback. 
Second down, five yards to go from the 30. Bazarkowitz off to Anderson, a flag on the play. Look at the running lane. The 20, the 15, but as we mentioned, a flag went in the air. Illegal motion against St. Louis. Oh, that change of that cadence. A new quarterback coming in. Invariably, that happened. If you might be able to pick it up, see if we can pick this up and see who moves before the snap of the football and because it's just a different cadence every every quarterback has a different count see going right there it's hard to pick up who actually moved but you saw the flag come into the picture i'm impressed the way they're running the ball aren't you boy they're doing a good job good draw call that time so it's after the penalty second down ten and a half yards to go pizarro it's his first pass of the day He's got Tilly, and Tilly to the 25-yard line. That's very close to the first down. Boy, he delivered that ball, didn't he? And it's tough to come in like that and deliver the ball this way because he's been sitting a little bit. Hey, man, a lot of pressure thrown on him to come in, and it's so good to get that first completion under your belt. And that was the first down. We've been told that Jim Hart sprained his left foot. Oh, yeah. And sprained ankle sometimes or sprained anything take a long time to heal first down inside the 25 yard line Pozarkowitz he threw four touchdown passes in a preseason game against Atlanta but he hasn't seen that much action started one game for the Cardinals last year give to Wayne Morris Morris to the 15 yard line and the Cardinals are running the ball right at Philadelphia a team who's been tough to run against Renard Wilson making the tackle just a slant off tackle and you can see Slants off tackle, good blocking by that left side of the Cardinal line. We understand now, there he goes. Jim Hart is going in for x-rays. Boy, that is tough, as this guy has battled back all year long, and he had things moving last week, rolling today, and all of a sudden, you're in the dressing room. From the 15-yard line, second down, and less than a yard to go. Pazarkowitz to Anderson. Anderson's got the first down. Boy, when he cuts and he runs into, you better be ready for a collision. Let's look at that Pittsburgh-Cincinnati game, and this is a surprise. Cincinnati came back, and Dan Ross on a seven-yard run. That's a dangerous team. You're 0-6. You come in there, and they can sneak up on you. 7-3, they're leading. A first down. Anderson now has 24 yards thus far, and San Francisco trying to pick up their first win. A field goal to jump out in front. First quarter scores. Willard Harrell now has come in. Otis Anderson has checked out in the backfield on a first down call from the 13-yard line. Play action. Pazarkowitz. Flag on the play. He's got Morris. Morris at the 12-yard line, but again a flag. You know, the Cardinals last week had 12 penalties against them, and it looks like they're going to pick up where they left off. That's the illegal motion again. They haven't adjusted to his cadence yet, I guess. There's our officials, Jim Tunney, very well-known official. Pat Harder, what a football player he was for the Chicago Cardinals, University of Wisconsin. This is a good crew. They, the thing I like about these officials, they enjoy doing the game. Let's listen to Jim Tunney. Illegal motion, offense, still first down. That's twice that's been called. Do you think that's a cadence again? I do. I, I have to believe it's a cadence. You get into a rhythm with that one quarterback, and all of a sudden that he's either slower and delivering the thing. I'll say one thing before Pizarco, which looks like we have a little equipment problem now with Wayne Morris. He's come in there, and he's shown pretty good poise, hasn't he? He has. That first pass completion, you like to get that one down, and he, he completed that pass, too. For the Cardinals, their second sustained drive, their first one was an aborted effort, a 48-yard field goal. Now they're moving again just inside. Four minutes to go, first quarter. Willard Harrell. Harrell is to the 15, inside the 15 to the 14-yard line. Going to bring up second down, still long yards. As Frank LaMaster made the stop. This Eagle defense, in some ways like Washington now, they're having role playing. They peep. People are playing on runs. People are playing on pass. It's getting more and more that way in the NFL. Well, you see that Eagles right now just brought in Ken Clark. They got in their rushman now. Anderson's going to come back in now. Harrell will check out. Wayne Morris comes out. Theotis Brown checks in. So they're alternating those four running backs. Pretty good depth for this Cardinal football team. They've had the best draft they feel in the history of their franchise. Seven of their first eight picks made this club. Here's Pizarkowitz on the play action. Gets it off to Anderson. 
Anderson to the 15, to the 10, to the 9-yard line. But he still has to get to the 3 to get a first down. Ken Clark over there, the man you just mentioned, second-year man from Syracuse, over to make the stop. It's at the 9-and-a-half-yard line. It's still going to be 7 yards to go for the first down. Well, they were expecting to pass in because they had in their pass defensive team. They brought in their rushman, Harrison, and Clark. They left Clark in, but they bring back in Claude Humphrey, and Harrison goes out now. Cardinals 2 of 3 today on those third down conversions. They were 13 of 19 last week against Houston. That's almost 70%. Third down, a long six to go. Bazarkowitz getting a little pressure, and he's hit. Harris, the intended receiver. Bazarkowitz had somebody dragging him down as he threw that football that somebody looked like Carl Hairston again. Also, Humphrey was back there, and that's going to bring on Steve Little again with a second field goal effort of the day. I, I saw Pasarkowitz go down. He really took a hit from Harrison, and he got up very slowly. Who do they go to now? <laughs> I don't know, to be honest with you. I have to think about that one. From the 17-yard line, a 27-yard field goal attempt, Little kicking, and Little has it on the way, and he got this one. And so the Cardinals are on the scoreboard with 2.22 to go in the first quarter. A score from Bush Stadium. The Cardinals three, the Philadelphia Eagles nothing. We'll be back in just a moment. Steve Little, 27 yard field goal, his third of the year. And there's Wally Henry. Henry comes in here, third in the NFC and kickoff returns. He's an exciting guy, number 89, and he's gonna bring it out. Wally Henry, oh, is he hit? Did he get hit? That is Roy Green, number 25, who's not getting up. Green, the rookie out of Henderson State, a fourth-round draft pick. You cannot hit anybody harder than he did on that play. He split the wedge. Nobody laid a hand on him, and he hit him full blast. Oh, oh let's, let's go back and see this. You'll watch him. He'll come in from the left side here and running. Nobody lays a hand on him. Right there. There he is, 25. Ooh, does he hit him? I don't think Henry saw him. I don't know how Henry got up. Green has done an excellent job on the special teams. As we said, he led the NFC in kickoff return. And then on a big tackle, doesn't give the Eagles the field position they'd like. We have a timeout. The Cardinals lead it. Read it nothing. Big Vermeil standing behind Larry Barnes there going over. He'll be 43 at the end of this month. He spends, what, three nights a week at the stadium studying film, stays up till 4 o'clock in the morning, trying to get that little extra edge for his football team. I don't think anybody works harder than uh, Dick Vermeil does to be successful. There's Green coming off, and that's good. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals and the National Football League is prohibited. So they're going to have the football at the 13-yard line. It's a remarkable tackle by Roy Green. Montgomery Harris, the running back behind Jaworski. This is Montgomery, and Montgomery comes skittering out to the 20-21, and that's just where he picked up last week. We were so impressed with him a week ago. Calvin Favron making the stop. They're going to be two yards short of the first down. As we look at Ron Jaworski's uh, stats there. Boy, he's got the interceptions huh? down, hasn't he? He has. He's been very consistent. You know, there was some concern about the Eagles playing against. This is the first team they faced that used the 34 defense. There was some concern about it, and I'll touch on it after this play. Jaworski, two years ago, had 21 interceptions. Cut him down to 16 last year. Here's Harris giving chase as Eric Williams. And I believe he caught him before he got to that first down. He needed two yards. Williams giving chase, dropping him short of the first down. It'll be a third down. The 34 concern of playing against this 34 defense, the Eagles didn't feel that there would be any problem against it because they face it every day in practice against their own team because that's what they use. Basically, what it affects the most is the center, isn't it? The center has that man on his nose, which he doesn't like. <laughs> third down, a yard to go. 106. Moments ago, the Cardinals had 11 minutes in time of possession, a minute and a half for Philadelphia. So the Cards have had the football. And there is Harris trying to get the first down, and I don't know. Bob Pollard was there first defensively. 
I don't think they got it. They held him. It's going to bring up a fourth down. You look at this right here, and you should see this stingy defense. Kurt Allerman going in there. Allerman making the tackle with a lot of help. They're going to measure now. The Eagles came on with their punting team, and now they're waiting to see that they didn't think he got it. They're on. Go ahead, Excuse Sonny. Me. Only giving up 34%, allowing 34% third down conversions, and they get away with another, and they've improved on that. I'll tell you what, the Cardinals are second in the NFC against the rush, and that showed it right there why they are. And here's a guy, Max Runninger, has been unconscious kicking the last two weeks. Averaged 45 yards a kick two weeks ago and 44-5 last week. Comes in here, a 38-yard average. Back is Willard Harrell, and Harrell will come up. It's a little bit short. And he doesn't fair catch. He's got a block from John Fairfield. Look out to the 45, the 40, and he's going to be knocked out of bounds at the 32-yard line. John Fairfield with a big block on that play. And that's what sprung Harrell up the field, a 23-yard return by Willard Harrell. Boy, he does. He, he gets away from his first man. Looks like he's going to get tackled right there, escapes, and look at the block in Fairfield. Brings him loose right there. Big block on John Spagnola. And he has a good running room up the sideline. And he gets great field position again for the St. Louis Cardinals. Earlier this year, Harrell returned one 68 yards. Jurgensen, the Cardinals with seven first down. Philadelphia, zero right now. It's unbelievable. They Third. came to play today. Morris. Anderson, the running back, from the 33 after that fine return by Willard Harrell. The kick was 34 yards and a return of 23 by Harrell. Pazarkowitz to Tilly. Tilly was hung up on the far side with Bobby Howard. Couldn't shake loose. Tilly's over there talking to the official. He felt maybe he was interfered with. Yeah, he, he makes a little contact back here with Howard. I think that's what he's questioning. Take a look at it. They're isolated here on Pat Tilly going down. The defensive man is not allowed to make contact after he passes five yards. Maybe they called it unavoidable contact because you saw the contact there. Tilly was looking for some little help from the referee. Second down, 10. From the 33, this is Anderson. Anderson to the 30 and hit from behind by Humphrey. His forward progress to the 28-yard line. And I want to say this. Anderson has all kinds of running room. They are opening up holes. Offensive line, Bostic, and you can see uh, Terry's, what Terry Steve has done, giving that offensive line of the Cardinals some leadership. Check that game between the Giants and 49. <laughs> Three to two, you're kidding. <laughs> Is that a baseball score? As they got a safety, the Giants got a safety on a missed snap from center. Well, that's the end of our first quarter here as the Cardinals, with a three to nothing lead, dominating the first quarter. As Philadelphia coming in here with that four-game winning streak, if they could win today and Dallas lose tonight, they could have sole possession of first place in the NFC East. The two brain trusts, 42-year-old Dick Vermeil, 62-year-old Bud Wilkinson. They have great respect for one another. Visited before the start of today's game, and right now Bud's team with a three-to-nothing lead. With Sonny Jurgensen, I'm Gary Bender, and as you look back in that first quarter, Time and possession, the Cardinals had the ball 11 minutes, 45 seconds. The Eagles, 3 minutes and 15 seconds. They're not being able to run. Give credit to that Cardinal defense. Third down and six as we start the second quarter. Tilly and Mel Gray, the wide receivers. Wayne Morris, Otis Anderson, the running backs. Behind Steve Pizarkowitz. We understand there's a chance that Hart could return. They'll try to wrap his ankle. Here's a throw by Pizarkowitz. He's got Gary Paris, the tight end. First down at the 15-yard line, and Pazarkowitz is throwing the ball with authority. Boy, he split the zone then. The Eagles were back in zone coverage at double the outside receivers. You see Morris swinging out of the backfield. He threw to the perfect man to throw to in that zone, and he found the little seam, and you see where Paris is. Good completion, good throw, and a good read of the defense by Pazarkowitz. There's that time in possession we mentioned just a little bit ago. So the pickup to the 15-yard line for the first down. As Gray now to the bottom of the screen, here comes Al Chandler, the tight end, jumping in. That's one of the few times they moved him into that position. Here's Wayne Morris. Morris to the 11-yard line, maybe the 10. 
Right, he, that time kind of backing into that one. He did. He got the most out of that. There was no room to run at all. Yet he picks up about four yards on the thing. Zarkowitz now three of five for 30 yards, and I'm sure gaining confidence each play. Going to mark it at the 11. It'll be second down, still six yards to go. Just underway in the second quarter. The difference in this game, a 27-yard field goal by Steve Little. Tilly, Gray again, the wide receivers. They're going to lead the tight end of the backfield this time. Lazarkowitz with time, but nobody's open. Gets away from Dennis Harrison. Looking, throws. Intended receiver Chandler can't hang on. Well, he had the time, but just nobody open. Terry Totalo defending on that play. I tell you, they really give him a long time to throw. Watch Pat Tilly trying to find open get an opening, some place to go after he sees Pisarkowick uh, scrambling. You see, he reverses his pattern, goes back, throw it here, and he's going to stop again. That's what you call a broken pattern. <laughs> Bobby Howard's played very well, hasn't he? 23. They were talking about him yesterday. He's a 13-year veteran, and he stayed with Tilly all the way. So we come to another third down, third and six. I'll say one thing about Pisarkowick. It's been easier to throw the ball. It takes courage to stand back there sometimes, doesn't it? And hang on. Keep looking. Showing some poise. On a third and six. Protection is there. He's got his man, Anderson. He almost made a remarkable catch. And so Steve Little will come in again. Boy, if he'd have held on to that. Let's go back and see how close he came to catching that ball. This was a great throw, too, because he kept the ball away. From the defender, he threw the ball perfectly and watch his effort to catch his football. Looks like he has it there. What an effort. He loses it going down. He had that nickel defense in, brings on little again. This is a 28-yard field goal. He earlier hit one from 17 yards. Worley to hold. Little kick is on the way. It's good. And he now is two of three for the afternoon. And the young man who has handed the kicking job all his sole responsibility delivering on two occasions and the Cardinals lead it six to nothing. Okay. There's Jim Hart. You joined us late. He sustained a sprained foot and they took him in. They have wrapped it and they're looking at him again. It looks like they're taking the wrap back off again. It may be too tight, but there is a possibility he could return. Darkwood's doing a very good job in his absence. The Cardinals had the ball three times. They've gotten two field goals, missed on another one. Here's Wally Henry having all kinds of problems. Fairfield, he gets away and look out. It could be quite a foot race here. Ken Stone gets him. But that's what happens sometimes when you mishandle a punt or a kickoff. Everybody overcommits and everything opens up for you. Everybody relaxes for a split second, and that's what happened then. They relax for a split second. Wally Henry very wisely jumped back to the outside and made a good return. Saw that drive a moment ago, culminating in the 30 or 28 yard field goal. And from the 27, the Eagles have the football. Second quarter score, Washington is leading Cleveland three to nothing on a Mark Mosley field goal. 26 yard return that time by Henry. Boy, he's an exciting football player for this Eagle team. Don Jaworski off to Montgomery, Montgomery to the 32, possibly the 33 yard line. Montgomery much stronger this year, and he says that one of the reasons is he had a hill outside his home in Greenville, Mississippi. He ran up and down it all summer long. He says he strengthened the leg. He had a 126-yard day against the Giants also to go with that effort of a week ago. Got 579 yards already. He's ahead of last year's pace. He has 13 yards today on three carries. Second down, five. This is Montgomery again, and it's congested as he's to the 34, and that's all. Steve Neal's a very, very smart linebacker, playing very well from the left side, made that tackle, and it's third down and still a long three, and <laughs> the Giants have bumped their lead up a little bit. The Giants are up now 9-3. to three. Phil Sims ran 18 yards for the touchdown. He's done quite a job, hasn't he? He won last week in his first start. Third down, a long three. Thus far, the Eagles are 0 for 2 on third down conversion. Jaworski wants to throw it. Blitz by Williams. He gets it off Oda Montgomery for the first down. Jaworski was hit hard by Eric Williams, but he found his target and he got the first down. So they convert their first third down of the afternoon. Good smart play that time, going to the back, coming out, and he had to get rid of it in a hurry. 
Boy, he got hit pretty well by Williams. Miami is leading Buffalo 14 to nothing. Buffalo last week shut out. After all that offensive explosion, they're having a little trouble getting back on the scoreboard. That's right. What happened to all that offense, huh? So Philadelphia with their initial first down of the game from the 40-yard line. 11-19 to go. Second quarter, 6-0 St. Louis. Jaworski back to throw. Carmichael. Oh, look at Carl Allen. He's got to get a flag on that one. Allen hit him on the head and did it out of bounds, which is a no-no. That's going to get him an automatic first down. That's a foolish, foolish mistake. The ball is overthrown. It's overthrown. Watch Carmichael. A sideline pattern. You see, it's hard to overthrow a six-eight guy. But it, uh, Jaworski had an awful lot on the board, on the ball. You see the ball way over the top, and Allen didn't know it. it gives him a little shot in the back of the head, and it's the Colston one. He's that tall. You don't know what's happening <laughs> up there. Automatic first down to the 45-yard line, and now the Eagles have some field position for the first time in this game. Mr. Carmichael does not have a catch yet. Neither does Mel Gray. He has okay. 80 in a row. Both those wide receivers would like to keep their strings going. I don't know how you can shut Carmichael out, though. I don't either. From the 45, Jaworski on the first down. Carmichael again, way too tall, and look at Allen again. Two hey. flags to throw. That's his second flag again. We're going to take a look at it. The same thing, just a different pattern. A turn in this time. And watch Carmichael. He comes down. Number 27, unnecessary. Take a look. And watch Allen come in. You see the ball's over his head. And look at Allen going at him. I don't know about that one. That was not near as flagrant as the time before. He came in and hit him in the shoulder pads. Carmichael saw him coming. The first one is very apparent. This one a little bit questionable, maybe. Carmichael expected him to do it, too. That's right. Because you can see that he turned and faced him when the ball was overthrown. The second one on Carl Allen. A penalty yardage already, was it? 40 yards. Last week they had 12 penalties. From the 30th first down, Joe warski has got Carmichael and the string is alive. 103 consecutive games. He can break that record Complete November 4th in a game at home against Cleveland. By Carmichael, said, by guy, I think. Carmichael said, put me on the other side of the field. He got away from Allen. Runs a little quick post pattern. And he's drilled this time. First and 10 on the play. That is a first down. That's his 23rd catch. And Abramowitz's record, well, he's two from time. And they went, at, they went to him three straight times, didn't they? I think that's like money in the bank. You just keep going to that guy, and he'll pay off for you. At the 10:30 mark, quick pitch to Montgomery to the 15. Maybe he didn't even get there. He got a yard, and that's all. Kurt Allerman over the Penn State All-American. Boy, did he make a fine play then! Good position, waiting for the cutback running of Wilbert Montgomery, and he makes a good play. Allerman is the guy they said couldn't run well enough, didn't have great quickness but he's only their best special teams performer, and now a starter at middle linebacker in the absence of Tim Carney. Second down, they gave him a pickup of one, second and nine. Operating from the 17-yard line, six to nothing, St. Louis on two field goals. Montgomery Harris, the running back. Jaworski. He's got Montgomery, and Montgomery inside the 15 to the 13-yard line. It'll bring up a third down. Calvin Fabron, he's a rookie, playing in place of the injured Mark Arneson, who they hope to have back in a couple of weeks. He played very well. He has. I talked with Arneson coming up on the elevator today, and he says he's looking forward to getting back out there and playing because Fabron's playing too well. Montgomery going out now. Billy Campfield replaces him, and now we come to another third down. You see Philadelphia, one of three. It'll be third down and still... A long five to go, almost six yards. See, Wally Henry's checked in at a wide receiver. He's out there along with Carmichael to the near side. Third down. He's got his man, Crepley, and Crepley to the five, four-yard line. And that's going to be a first and goal for Philadelphia. And Crepley has now 14 catches in the last four games. Good call here and a good pattern, uh, Crefley just comes away from his tight end position. You see him, just a little shallow pattern. He pushes off the linebacker and just goes straight out right off of Steve Neal. Catches it, picks up the first down. 
Nine yard pickup on the play. Crimpley has really played well. Averaging 19.6 per catch that leads all tight ends. That's his 18th catch of the year. Look at that. He was hurt last year down the stretch drive. They really missed him. First and goal at the four. Campfield, Billy Campfield trying to take it in. Big strong man. They call him the Hulk on this team. He's the Lou Ferrigno of the <laughs> Philadelphia Eagles. Big, strong guy. Bob Pollard made the stop. It'll be the two-yard line. Second and goal there. The Cleveland Browns have come back and taken a 6-3 to three lead over the Washington Redskins. Old teammate Calvin Hill scored for the Browns, and the extra point was blocked. They're bringing in Ron Yankowski and John Bearfield as Worley and Allen check out on this goal line. That's Carmichael in motion. Nope, he's going to set in the wing position. I give to Harris. Harris trying to go wide, and he can't get there. Ken Green dropped him, but the man that stuffed it first was Ken Stone, and Stone is shaken up. Stone is taking himself out of the game, and Roy Green will replace him. Great lateral pursuit this time by the Cardinal defense. You can see right here, Kenny Stone comes up, makes a hit, gets bounced off. Harris keeps his balance, keeps fighting, and Green comes over. And denies him that end zone. That was the same play, if you look at films, that they scored on against Pittsburgh. Coming in is Roy Green, believe it or not. He was shaken up earlier, replacing Ken Stone, but he's in there again. Third and goal. They lost a yard to the three-yard line. Jaworski back in the corner. Touchdown. But touchdown catch is made by the big man, Harold Carmichael. And who did they beat? They beat Roy Green for the touchdown. Just came in. And they go immediately to their big man down there. Hard to defend against him. Look at him. He's in the slot position here. Green's got him single coverage. Jaworski lays it up. Made it look easy. You think they were picking on Green? They knew he was in there or it just happened that way? I just think it happened that way. Uh, that's who they like to go to down around the goal line. Franklin, point after block. Right on the play. Now the flag, let's see what it's all about. Looked like maybe Mike Dawson was the guy that got the hand on the ball. Offside, St. Louis. That could have been a big block point after. It is, but you, it's easier to block them if you're offside. <laughs> that helps, doesn't it? <laughs> you line up on this side of the ball. <laughs> well, Franklin has missed one point after. He's 13 of 14. I did not hear that, but it was offside against St. Louis. Franklin will try it again. Franklin has been nothing short of sensational. The third round draft pick out of Texas A&M. Missed only one field goal, and that was from 52 yards. And he hits them, doesn't he? Point after is good. It's seven to six now. So the Eagles take the lead. Three yard touchdown pass from Jaworski to Carmichael. Franklin adding the point after. A one point lead for the Eagles. That was a 72 yard drive, but you gotta remember, they were helped by two unnecessary roughness penalties on Carl Allen, the cornerback, as Franklin kicks off. Green is going to bring it out. This is the guy that was unbelievable, hit a while ago, and he runs out and gets hit himself this time at the 18-yard line. For the Cardinals, and it looks like Pizarkowitz will return to quarterback as Hart is sitting on the bench with a warm-up jacket on. A 19-yard return. Look at that drive. Took a lot of time. That's it. That's the Eagles we saw play last week. A lot of time in possession last week against the Redskins. You know what I like about Ron Jaworski? He's not throwing the ball all that much, but his percentage is so good. He's 5 of 6 today. Last week he was 8 of 12. They're just very judiciously throwing the football. We just saw that New York Giants San Francisco score 16 to 3. The Giants are leading. On the 18-yard line, first down for the Cardinals. Anderson. And Anderson might get back to the line of scrimmage, pick up a yard to the 19. Nothing developed because John Bunning, number 95, was there. Anderson getting up slowly. You were mentioning, you mentioned Bunning. He had the surgery after hurting the knee in the sixth game of 1978, and he has ice on it almost all the time in order to play this game. I'm coming out of the hotel with ice on his leg, and he says he has to to keep his knee from swelling. Ken Stone, we mentioned, was hurt a while ago. He dislocated the finger on his left hand. He took himself out. Back to throw, Steve Pizarkowitz. 
He's going to toss that one away. Gray, the intended receiver, but Herman Edwards had him covered. Well, he did the smart thing in throwing that one away. There's Stone. Stone with four interceptions. He's just been a remarkable football player for this team with the dislocated finger. He has four interceptions in the last five games. Last year, he had nine for the Cardinals. So, Pazarkowicz now three of eight for 30 yards. At the 19 and a half, third down. Third down, eight. Seven, six. The Eagles with the lead. Pazarkowicz. Protection breaking down. He's got the man over the middle, Wayne Morris. Behind him. Looks like maybe, Sonny, that ball might have been tipped somewhere as it headed up the field. I think he surprised Morris with the football, but he got a big rush that time from Bigfoot Harrison. Bigfoot Harrison. Let him in sacks a year ago. Six and a half. He wasn't on the roster at the start of the year. He was on the injured reserve list. They're glad to have him back. And here comes Steve Little, who's kicked very well. He's eighth in the NFC with that average. Back is Wally Henry. Wally Henry always provides problems for you. He is fifth in the NFC in punt return. Little end over end at the 46 yard line, Wally Henry. And Henry to the 40, he runs into his own man. And that may have kept him from breaking to the outside. I think it did, his own man. I believe that was Frank LeMaster. That shows you what Henry can do, a 17-yard return, a 34-yard kick. Let's go back and pick it up. You see some great running ability here. Looks like he's going to go outside, cuts back up, then he comes against the grain. Let's see who it is that he does run into. There it is, number 59. Al Chesley. Al Chesley, the big rookie from Pittsburgh. I'm out. We'll be back in a moment. The Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders, Tony Tenille, Charlie Pride, a lot of them. That's going to be fun. Bill Cosby. First down for the Eagles at the 37 of St. Louis. Jaworski, beautiful play action fake. Camfield intercepted for a moment by Roger Worley. Boy, what a fake by Jaworski, and what a fine effort by Worley. He had good hands on that play. That wasn't Worley's coverage. He came off of his coverage and played the ball. Really made a big play on the ball, only to drop it. Worley really played well against Philadelphia in the past. In fact, the Eagles are saying it seems like every game he's come up with a big interception or a fumble recovery. Wish he wouldn't mention that to me. I hit him in the chest right here on the same field that he went about 55 yards with. He's got good hands. I don't see him dropping those balls. How many times did you run that film back? <laughs> Second down, 10 now from the 37. Jaworski again. Pressure put on. Montgomery at the 40. Montgomery to the 35. Excellent effort. He's to the 33, maybe the 34-yard line. Pretty good reaction that time by the Cardinals, but good effort by Montgomery. It shows you that you've got to tackle this guy. You can't just go out and expect him to go down without any effort. You see his little screen pass out to him. Watch this. Eric Williams comes up first. Uh-oh, where did he go? <laughs> he just dodges people and keeps going. Pollard missed him. Neal's finally brings him down. Going to bring up third down and six. From the 33-yard line. Seven to six. The Eagles with the lead. Cardinals scoring their six points on two field goals. Jaworski back. Pressure by Davis. Broken up again. And this time it's Carl Allen. Well, Allen finally got one over there after two interferences. And Jaworski is hit. That's Dawson, number 73, getting up. Ron is down. And... Both quarterbacks now have been hurt in this game. Hard earlier, and now Jaworski. He got hit just as he delivered the ball, and for you in such a defenseless position, throwing the ball unprotected, you can't brace yourself in any way. He delivered it and took the blow. He has been a tough customer. Ron Jaworski started every one of the games last year for Philadelphia. We'll have a timeout at the 5.30 mark. The Eagles with a one-point lead. All right, back here at Bush Stadium, a delay in the action while Ron Jaworski's being attended to. Let's go back on that last play, Sonny. Very fine defensive play. Carl Allen really makes a good play, almost intercepts this ball. 
Jaworski delivered, then he went down. You see Allen come right around. Carmichael almost had an intercept. Well, they're having a battle over there. Already two unnecessary roughness penalties on Allen. There's Jaworski getting up. It looks like a leg. And that is not good. Boy, I hate to see that. A football team that's five and one and under the direction of a quarterback who's just getting better every week. John Walton, who will replace him when he does go later. They're Hasn't thrown a pass all year for Philadelphia. Well, he's not even able to walk off, but uh, it is a leg injury of some type. You just get planted on this as this artificial surface is, Jerry. Uh, so unusual. Your, your foot and it just doesn't slide when you get hit that way. All right, this will be a 50-yard field goal attempt by Franklin. The only one he's missed this year was from 52 yards out. He's 8 of 9. His longest thus far has been 48. Kick on the way, and it is just short. Just short. A 50-yard attempt by Franklin. And so the Cardinals have held, and this is becoming a very costly football game as both Jim Hart and Ron Jaworski have been felled by injury. Well, tomorrow night on CBS, the White Shadow. And the big question is, will Coach Reeves go back to a pro team? Then on MASH, Radar says goodbye forever. <laughs> and WKRP in Cincinnati plays baseball against rival station WPIG. Followed by Lou Grant. That's on CBS Monday night. From the 33-yard line now, the Cardinals with the football after the missed field goal attempt. Otis Anderson going wide. He's up to the 35-yard line. Got a block that time from Bob Young. When Bob Young blocks you, you know you've been hit. I tell you, he ran right over John Bunning at time. He just buried him. They're going to give him only a yard on the play. Second down nine. Let's check Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, Sonny. It's in the second period, Cincinnati. Look at that. Can you believe it? 13 to 3. I just can't believe it. Cincinnati 0 and 6. And Miami leading Buffalo. Buffalo still being shut out. 17 and nothing now. Having to six our score here. Flag on the play. Pazarkowitz to Tilly. Tilly can't handle it as Bobby Howard is over there. But the Cardinals again with another penalty. They've been plagued by this all year long. Going to be offside. This time it's against Philadelphia. Looks like it might have been Claude Humphrey, the left side of that defensive line. Jim Tunney walking it off. Offside. 85. Still second down. That can't be 85. 85 is uh, Charles Smith. So I think it's Humphrey. 87. 87, I think it is. I think it's Claude Humphrey. Smith is a wide receiver. The penalties in this game now, five for a total of 40 yards against the Cardinals. Philadelphia, one for five yards. Second down now, four. Anderson. Look at him cut, would you? Out to the 44-yard line, very close to the first down. He gets low to that ground for a big guy at 6'2", 215 pounds. That's Humphrey again on the tackle, and they got the first down. We understand that Jaworski has a sprained left ankle. Hart has, what, a sprained foot? That's really interesting. You wouldn't expect both injuries both to be so similar. There he is. There he goes, right on the front of the... Cardinal Hellman there going off the field. Both quarterbacks have had to be taken in for x-rays. Zarkowitz, the man in place of Hart, wants to get it off on the screen. He's going to run it, and he goes down at the 49. He wanted to get it off to Anderson. Anderson was covered, and so he just took off. He had to be careful that time. He almost threw a lateral here. Watch him when he goes back. You see the delay by Anderson going out. The problem is he's got a Carl Harrison in front of him, and you see he can't throw the ball. He ducks back. A little scramble, doesn't he realize that Hart is injured and he's running with the football? Zarkowitz has good size. He's 6'2", 205. Dana 5, second and 5. On the 49, Zarkowitz to Anderson. Anderson spins away, and he's into the Philadelphia end of the field at the 47 and a half. Carl Harrison again making the stop. We mentioned that Harrison has 10 sacks, but Sonny, they think maybe he's better against the run. They think he's the best in football. That's what the old Swamp Fox says, Marion Campbell, that coaches that defensive line, and uh, he thinks he does play the run as well as anybody in football, but this year, he's become a pass rusher too, 10 sacks. One yard to go on a third down. The Cardinals three of seven on third down conversion. Three, 27 to go. At halftime, we'll be visiting with all-pro middle linebacker, Bill Berge. 
Here's the give to Anderson, and Anderson is, is he down? He's not. He fumbled the ball, though. Who's got it? They're unpiling Anderson on the second effort, stripped, and the Cardinals have recovered it. <laughs> I don't believe the Eagles agree with that. <laughs> the Eagles were signaling one way. You see, Tony giving the indication there. Watch this from the handoff. See where he loses the ball. Looks like he goes into a pileup and is going down. Keeps his balance, comes out. That's where the ball came out. The ball got knocked free of him, and I don't see it. Such a pile in for everybody going in after it, but the Cardinals keep the football. That was John Shira that came flying by that did separate him from the football. So they have a first down. Anderson, 42 yards for the afternoon. A first down for the 44. Pizarkowitz with time. And Tilly intercepted by Randy Logan, the strong safety. Logan to the 40, 45, 50, and he's knocked out of bounds at the Cardinal 48-yard line. Randy Logan with his first interception, and we have yet another eagle down on the field. A 32-yard return by Randy Logan as another Philadelphia player has been shaken up. And a very bad decision that time by Steve Pasarka to throw that football right into the teeth of the defense. He hung the ball, and Logan had a very easy interception. And we see John Walton coming on now to quarterback the Eagles. The Cardinals leading the NFL in turnovers. That's 20. You know who's second? Detroit. Third is Cleveland. That's right. And so Hart had 11 interceptions coming into the game. That's the 12th interception of the year by the Cardinal quarterbacks. And you said it very well. There were too many green jerseys around Tilly. Uh, he just laid the ball up right into a pile of people. And uh, would you look at that. Is that something? Doug Coter got their last points, 22 to three now, and Cincinnati is leading Pittsburgh, 20 to three. That's Carl Hairston, the man shaking up, man we were just talking about a moment ago. Looks like he might be okay though. Going to very slowly let him get his wits together. So Walton comes in now. John Walton has been in the league. He's been around. He was a free agent with the Rams. Dick Vermeil was an assistant with LA when he was there. He then went to the World Football League and then has come over to play with Philadelphia in his fifth year in the NFL. Well, next week, Sonny, we reach the halfway mark of the NFL season and Philadelphia and Washington will go big, at it again. Big rematch, huh? Chicago, Minnesota, that's always a rugged football game in the Central Division. Detroit, New Orleans, and other regional games that will be coming your way. The Giants against surprising Kansas City. St. Louis against Dallas. They'd like to redeem themselves after that one point loss. Be sure now to consult your local listings for the games and times in your area. First down after the interception by Randy Logan, setting it up with the Cardinal 48, Wilbert Montgomery. Montgomery to the 45, the 40, he has the first down. Inside the 40 to the 38 yard line. This is just a pitch back, the pitch back to Montgomery. He gets good blocking this time. Look at the blocking. Uh-oh, wait a second. A little holding by Harris there. <laughs> he got away with it. You see, Allen made the tackle, and he's hurt. That's the man that's down. Allen with a body block that time, knocking Montgomery down, but he's not getting up. So on two successive plays now, we've had people shaking up. This historically has been a very tough physical game, and today is no exception. Well, you're going to have to watch this. You see the body block there, and a lot of people go over. Carl Allen, you're going to have to get a number to get an x-ray in there, aren't you? Well, people standing in line. I understand now that Hairston will be able to return. He had his bell rung, but will be back. And now Allen coming off. Montgomery with 25 yards now as Perry Smith will come in and replace Carl Allen. Now you're a quarterback, Sonny. Do you go after Perry Smith right away? I do, yes. I think you would go after him right away. And there's the quarterback who's never thrown a pass this year. Had a good preseason for the Eagles. They have a lot of confidence in him. They do. Second down, a yard to go. Got a play here he could kind of play around with. But he's going to go for the first down, gives to Montgomery, and Montgomery has the first down. A slashing type runner, a great cutback runner, Montgomery is. That time, Bob Pollard making the stop. Montgomery said that when it started turning around for him, as we come to the two minute warning, was the Pittsburgh game when he gained 98 yards. He then had 126 against the Giants. And last week, four touchdowns at 127 yards. Seven to six, our score at the two minute warning as the Cardinals got off first in this game. 
There's the veteran Jim Hart giving his expertise to Steve Pazarkowitz. Hart is hurt. Jaworski's been hurt. Pazarkowitz and Walton have come in. Walton now has the team at the 33-yard line of St. Louis. First down, Philadelphia. 7-6, to six, the Eagles with the lead. John Walton going to throw his first pass, Crepley. And Crepley out of bounds. Ken Stone, who's back in there, despite that dislocated finger. Ball will be marked at the 28-yard line. It'll bring up second down and five. Good smart throw that time uh, to throw the ball short, get your completion. And he also got out of bounds to stop the clock. Crepley's the guy that nobody knew anything about. And when they traded Charlie Young to Los Angeles for Ron Jaworski, Crepley took over the job. And Jaworski and Crepley have been quite a combination since that time. Second catch for Keith for 14 yards. Second and five. Montgomery. Montgomery trying to go wide. Oh, hit hard at the 25-yard line. Well, it's going to bring up third down and still three yards to go. You see the time, the upper right-hand portion of your screen. The Eagles scoring in the second quarter at the 13-26 mark after the Cardinals had hit two field goals, one of 28 yards and one of 27 yards. Listen Summary, to, 33 yards. Excuse me, Gary. Listen to this score. Cincinnati is leading Pittsburgh 27-3. to Their last two touchdowns have come on fumble recoveries that were picked up and run in for a touchdown. And of course, Pittsburgh's only loss of the year prior to today was to this Philadelphia team. So timeout is called now by the Eagles. Philadelphia asked for the timeout at the 116 mark. And look at this one, Houston leading Baltimore. That's a big one for the Oilers, trying to bounce back from last week's loss. That also was a fumble recovery by a defensive lineman. Jesse Baker ran 20 yards with a Greg Landry fumble. New England, Chicago. Chicago Stanley. last week with a tough win. Drogan hit Stanley Morgan with a 10-yard pass. 7 to nothing. it's in the first quarter. And looking to the CBS Sports Spectacular, next Saturday at 4.30 Eastern Time, we'll have the 1979 World Amateur Roller Skating Championships from Altenau, West Germany. Artistic championships with men's and women's pairs and dancing, and the world's strongest men. Now listen to these competitions. Hoist lift, the tram pull, plus a special stunt. <laughs> of course, Bob Young, who we're watching today, is involved in that competition. John Paul of the Pittsburgh Steelers. The tram pull. <laughs> the pull, pull tram up, a, I think, a hill. I'm not sure what they do. I'm glad you had to say that town in West Germany. What did you say? It's Alton now, I believe. Alton now? I'm glad I didn't have to say We're that. We're going to hear from somebody that's from there that's going to say that that twang of mine <laughs> didn't quite catch it. The reason for the timeout, even though they had some problems in the huddle and getting the play call, that the clock was... The 30-second clock was down to six seconds, and they were going to get caught. They were still in the huddle. Third down, two yards to go. 1.16 remaining till halftime. Montgomery. And Montgomery may have the first down, but it's going to be close. Eric Williams came over there and just kind of cut the legs out from under it. Going to stop the clock at the 108 mark, and it may produce some measurement. And we have another man shaking up. And another Cardinal shaking up on the play, getting up slowly is Williams. Well, they, they play the thing well defensively. You see Neal's out there, Green out there, Eric Williams coming around and cutting his legs out from under him. Good defensive play by the Cardinals, and they're going to measure for it. Now, Williams will come out, and that means that Johnny Bearfield will replace him in middle linebacker, and Bearfield is an outside linebacker. They're short. Bearfield has played outside, but now must move inside after the loss to Carney. They are at a 44-man limit. They did not add the 45th man this week because they didn't know about the injury to Carney till too late in the week to re-sign a player. So they're short a linebacker, so Bearfield must play in the middle. Fourth and inches. Spagnola will come in. They have two tight ends in now. Two timeouts remaining for Philadelphia. And they're definitely in field goal range of Tony Franklin. Anywhere close to yeah. 50 yards, he's in field goal range. Fourth down, inches, and Walton trying to sneak it. <laughs> he just I guess he got over, it. I don't know. He leaped over the top. According to where they marked the thing, he did gain some ground on his leap. Well, they've had a tough time, haven't they? Earlier, they tried to send Harris for a yard. He couldn't get it. 
been a pretty tough interior of that St. Louis defense. Eric Williams coming back now. Let's watch it again. You'll see the sneak. You see how much yards he, he does gain some yards then. I think he picked it up. Kurt Allerman met him helmet to helmet. It is a first down. We understand the x-rays were negative on Ron Jaworski. No broken bones. He might return in the second half. And he definitely both starting quarterbacks that are out with him just have to be ready to play because they do not carry third quarterback. Not a lot of time left now. 32 seconds and counting on a first down for Walton. Walton. Carmichael. He was turned the wrong way. And that was what made that such a difficult catch. Roger Worley defending. Worley looked like it, if the ball had been underthrown, Worley played it real well. He looked like he was going to intercept the football, but it was he overthrew him. Watch this. You'll see he throws the ball on the wrong shoulder, as you stated. Looks like he wants to throw the ball the corner, but threw it down the middle. Watch, watch the adjustment Carmichael makes right here. He makes the adjustment to go back and almost makes a touchdown grab. Thing about him, you think you got him covered, but when he's 680, he always seems to have a little extra reach on you. That was a good indication of it. Second and ten with 24 seconds left. Here comes the blitz. Here it comes. That is Allerman. He got it off to Montgomery. Montgomery to the five. Oh, is he hit at the three-yard line? That's Ken Green, the strong safety. Now the time, very important, 11 seconds. They're going to call a timeout, I believe, are they? They're still letting it go. And now the clock has stopped with seven seconds. Well, they let a lot of time. The Didn't blitz they? comes on this. See the blitz coming. And he just gets the ball off. Finds Montgomery. Montgomery takes it on down the sideline. Watch his hit. Does he get a hit right there? Boom. Stunned by Ken Green. 19-yard pickup. Now here's the situation. First and goal at the three. They have one timeout remaining and seven seconds. I'm like you, Sonny. I don't know why they let so much time get away from them. They they lost their poise. They lost their poise a little bit. Walton uh, should have called timeout after the, the completion and the ball was down. But he was going down toward the huddle and realized that the clock was down this low. That's when he called the timeout. Boy. All right, now let me ask you this. You're, you're playing with fire now. You have seven seconds left. What are you going to do with seven seconds? You just settle for the field goal here or try one more pass? Oh, you got a pass play. You got to throw it. Uh, you, you can get it. Get it. You can, the play takes about five seconds. Okay. So if you, you go back and throw the ball, don't take too long. Throw it in completion. Clock is stopped. So from the three yard line, it'll be first and goal there. So they're going to evidently try one as Franklin is on the far sideline. He's ready. He's got the boot off, the barefoot ready to go. Well, they're not going to have a completion. It's not good for a touchdown. So it's either going to be incomplete or a touchdown. Throw the ball away. You don't want to make take any chances here with the football and get it picked off. John Walton in place of Ron Jaworski sends Carmichael in motion. 7-6 lead for the Eagles. Walton wanting to throw. Carmichael intercepted. Intercepted at Ken Stone. And Stone with his fifth interception of the year. And he did that with a dislocated finger. Bad decision by John Walton. He tried to force the ball this time. He had people open. He did not take them. He had a man open outside. Should have thrown the ball right then. Then he tries to come back. Force the ball down the middle. It gets tipped. Big play by Eric Williams. Tip that ball up in the air, and Kenny Stone comes away with it. Take a look at Montgomery, wide open outside for the touchdown if he wants him. Didn't go to him. Forced the ball back into Carmichael, gets tipped and intercepted. You know what happens on a play like that? Look at that for Ken Stone. Five interceptions. Is that you're thinking in your mind what you're going to do before the play develops. You got the feeling he was going to throw that ball to Carmichael? Regardless. He knew who he wanted to go to, and he did force it. Then, no Instead question. of going to Montgomery. So, with two seconds left now, Cardinals have the ball to the 20-yard line. They escape what could have been at least three points. Marzarkowicz, intended for Gray, intercepted by Logan again. His second interception of the day. Time is out, and Logan will be dropped at the 34-yard line. And what a first half of play we have had. Dick Vermeil's team with a one-point lead of 7-6. to six. We'll be visiting at halftime with all pro linebacker Bill Berkey.
The major story in the NFL this afternoon, a rookie quarterback by the name of Phil Simms is 9 of 14 for 155 yards, and the Giants are running it up on San Francisco. Meanwhile, New Orleans and Tampa Bay, well, there's the first score of the afternoon. The Buccaneers move ahead early in the third period, 7 to nothing. And, of course, the game you're watching, a big one for both teams, 7-6, both Jaworski and Hart are injured. And here's the score. Giants, 29, 49ers, 3 at the half. Cleveland and Washington. Cockroft with problems. Missed an extra point. 6-3. Mosley connected for three from 35 yards out. Miami going to beat Buffalo again. 17-0. That game is now in the third. It did rain for a time in the first half in that contest. Cincinnati, 27. Pittsburgh, 3. And the Steelers' defense is having all kinds of problems the last couple of weeks. Houston, ahead of Baltimore, 7-6. That game is now in the second. Steve Grogan has returned as the New England Patriots quarterback this week, and already he has thrown for two touchdown passes to Morgan and Jackson in that game. We told you about the rookie, Phil Sims of the New York Giants, drafted out of Moorhead State. You're probably aware of the story. On the day of the draft, the Giants really wanted to throw in Samoan. But Jack Thompson was gone, and let's watch what happens here. Melville of the 49ers, I still can't get over that play, giving the Giants two points on the safety, and then it was the rookie going to work. Here is Scales. So surprised that a giant quarterback could get it to him, he was out of bounds. And back came Sims again, this time looking for Gray, right down the middle. And Sims is covered this time, ducks the rush, goes to the corner, and picks up six as the Giants move ahead. Nine, three. Next catch by Gray is a beauty. This is tough territory over the middle. You're always going to take a lick here if you hold on. And Gray did for six. Doug Coder for the touchdown. And still, Sims was not finished. His favorite receiver, Gray, seven catches, 148 yards. None prettier than that one right there. And from there, it was the combination again. Sims to Gray, 29-3. Giants lead at half. Let's send you back to the game you're watching right now. The preceding announcement was brought to you as a public service by the National Football League. Gary Bender with Sonny Jurgensen, and Sonny, if you look at the stats, I'm surprised at this 7-6 game that the Eagles have rushed for only 42 yards. 42, that's, that's amazing, you know, they have to run the football. Dick Vermeil says we have to run to be successful. Two turnovers by both teams, two interceptions. The Eagles' turnover right before the half was more costlier to them. Time and possession, that all came about because in that first quarter, Cardinals had the football something like almost 12 minutes. Well, you see the plays up there, 40 offensive plays to the Eagles, 30. Now the story and the question mark we have right now is whether Hart and Jaworski will be able to continue. We've been trying to locate them, see who in fact will play. Right now the Cardinals will be kicking off as both of them were felled in the first half with ankle injuries, foot injuries. Both of them being sprains. They both had x-rays and they were negative. I have yet to find uh, Mr. Hart on the bench. I don't think he returned with the team. He may be inside, still getting treatment, or getting wrapped differently, but it looks like we're going to see Steve Pesarkovich going for the Cardinals. There's Wally Henry. We have another man that's out for the game, Roy Green, who earlier really had quite a tackle on a kickoff, bruised his shoulder later, and he is out now for the remainder of the game. Wally Henry at the goal line. Henry to the 20, 25, and to the 30, and he's to the 32-yard line. Wally Henry, who last year was hurt in a game against New Orleans, sustained a knee injury, and they really missed this little guy, and you can see why, because he really makes things happen. Thomas Lott made the stop, and John Walton's going to be the quarterback. You can take a look at this, and you'll see why he is so dangerous when he gets the ball. He gets some pressure from the outside around behind the wedge. You see that big green wedge in front of him, but he breaks tackles. He's a hard man to bring down. Keeps fighting, makes contact again with his own man over there, doesn't he? As we mentioned, the quarterback is John Walton from the 32. Gives off to Leroy Harris, and Harris wedges it out across the 35 to the 36. Well, and here comes Jim Hart. I don't think we're going to see him play into you. I don't imagine we would see him then. Just watching him walk on the field, I knew that he wasn't out there. I thought maybe he was getting some more treatment or something. Boy, it's ironic that both quarterbacks would sustain almost the same injury in the same game. Second down and six. 
So Pizarkowitz and Walton, they're going to be the people, the key figures in the second half of play. There's John Stats, a big interception, though, at the end of that first half. Quick pitch, Montgomery, Montgomery to the 40-42, and that might be enough for the first down. Bouncing off of people. He was hit right at the line of scrimmage, and he kept his balance and fought for the first down. And that's what it's going to be, I believe. Let's see. They're going to measure to be absolutely sure. Montgomery is that type of runner, very resourceful runner. He'll bounce off of you, and he did get the first down. Philadelphia, the 5-1 and one record. They'd like to win here, then return against Washington in the nation's capital next week. The last time they were 5-1? and one? 1961, and a guy by the name of Sonny Jurgensen was quarterback. How many did you win? You won, what, 7-1 and one that we year? We were 7-1 and one that year, and the one team to beat us? The St. Louis Cardinals. That's right. From the 42, first down, 13-47 in the third quarter. Walton gives off to Harris again, and Harris draws the crowd that time, doesn't he? Picked up a couple of yards, Bob Pollard. Let's look again at that Cardinal defense. A very fine defense, too, and they've developed, and they've, with a lot of injuries, you just see them playing off block, Pollard, Allerman, all of them over there. You know, we had some other people on that 61 team by the name of what, Brookshire and Irv Cross? I think he was Irv Cross first uh, year. His rookie he year. was a rookie year, yeah. Tampa Man. Bay, they're tied up now. Yeah, Manning, a two-yard run by Archie Manning, makes it 7-7. Seven to seven. Second down and eight now. From the 44, play action by John Walton. He's going deep to Crepley. Crepley hand fighting that time with Eric Williams over the middle. And John Walton not making the connection. And we have another eagle down at the 43 yard line. It might be, I think it's a left guard. That's Payro. Payro. That's the rookie. Now, he's the rookie that has been playing in place of the injured Wade Key, second round draft pick out of Northwest Louisiana. They have Gary Pett, a veteran from the New York Jets and last year Tampa Bay, who they can bring in, but they're getting very thin at that guard spot. Dick Vermeil looking on with concern as Petey Pero is assisted off the field. Pero is the guy playing in place of Wade Key. They really like him. They say he has the disposition of a defensive player. And now Gary Petz would come in to replace him from Valparaiso. He was drafted in the 12th round in 1973 by the Jets. And he started over there for five years. Third down and eight. John Walton on the third down. Pressure put on. Jankowski giving chase. He gets it off, though, to Harris. And Harris has spun around. Short of the first down, there's a flag flag around the 50-yard line. Good coverage in all areas that time by St. Louis. Bob Pollard is the man eventually who made the tackle and the pressure also. And it's going to be an ineligible receiver downfield. Got to anticipate that as much running around as he did. You can see how rusty John Walton is. He had Keith Crefley wide open that time right down the middle. Take a look at it when he goes back. You may be able to see Crefley come into the middle. There he is. Looking right in the middle, he's open, and he doesn't throw the ball. Of course, he had some people in his face, Mike Dawson. I think he said that was Pets, didn't he? 64 that was downfield again. Maybe he doesn't know which position they sent him in at. Maybe he thinks he's a wide <laughs> receiver, huh? Runniger will kick from the 30-yard line. Harrell is back deep. Now, wait a minute. A little mix-up out there. The officials want to talk things over. Ball has been spotted at the 48-yard line. They're still about eight yards short of the first down. Bud Wilkinson. Boy, that team, they feel like they were reborn a week ago when they beat Houston after that dismal performance on the West Coast against Los Angeles. Today they started out very well, but then they lost Jim Hart. And the two field goals has been their only scoring thus far. Runniger to kick. Low snap. He's kicking it to the 20-yard line. Harrell with a fair catch there. And so the Cardinals will have their first offensive opportunity of this second half of play. 12 minutes, 40 seconds remaining in quarter number three. The Eagles trying to make it 6-1, and one, have a one-point lead. Uh, you viewers will be seeing the Atlanta-Oakland game immediately following this one, so we have a lot of entertainment 
coming your way throughout the course of the day. As it's now first down at the 21-yard line, we understand that Payro suffered an injured right knee. Here is the give to Wayne Morris. And Morris is going to lose some yardage on that play. Reggie Wilkes, number 51, is over there. Wilkes hurt a back last week in that game against Washington, but it doesn't look like it bothered him too much. He's the guy that calls the defensive signals for the Eagles in only his second year out of Georgia Tech. Houston and Baltimore. Houston. 14 to 6 now. Earl Campbell on a seven yard run. It's Houston's second touchdown. He was held to 53 yards by the cards last week. Got a tie in Cleveland. Two Mark Mosley field goals. Croft Croft had his uh, extra point blocked. Lots of two on that last play. On a second and 12, Otis Anderson gets it to the 24 yard line. Ken Clark, number 71, making the tackle for the Philadelphia Eagles. The Eagle defense. Last week was ranked third. They gave up a lot of yards late in the game to Washington. They're now ranked fourth. But last year they gave up only 250 points. Just a little over 14 points a game. And Sonny, they're right back in there again doing the very same thing this year. 14-8 they're giving up now. They've given up about 89 points. But what's important to them, they're scoring more. They're averaging just over 20 points a game. And that's what Vermeil felt they had to do. Third down and seven. Lazarkowitz. Wayne Morris, first down. Wayne Morris, that's a pretty tough catch. Frank Lamaster is over to make the tackle. And on a third down, Pozarkowitz keeps him moving. You see him come out of the backfield. He gets good protection here, a little pressure by Harrison, but he delivers the ball. Enough for the first down. The swinging back out of the backfield. Boy, I tell you, Lamaster really <laughs> lowered a boom on him, didn't he? He did. Good blocking that time by Keith Wardman up front. He's been doing a good job against Carl Hairston, their top pass rusher. First down from the 33-yard line. Morris again. And again, reaction is very good, and it's Lamaster 55. He's the man who got a flag on the play. He played alongside Bill Berge for so long, and now trying to help the youngster Terry Totalo. Lamaster did play very well last week against Washington. He's a good linebacker. I think that's the strongest position the Eagles have is their linebacking crew. Well, their number one pick, Jerry Robinson, can't find a place to play. That's right. The Tolo Sippin, Chesley from Pittsburgh. Let's see what this penalty's all about. The foul, 68, first down. That's Terry Steve, guilty of clipping. Can't say enough about Terry Steve. The coaches were telling me he may be playing as well as any guard in the league right now. He's up to 260-some pounds, gained about 25 pounds, hit the weight, and they missed him. And last week he came back against Houston, and they started running the ball again. Much more strength this year, much stronger. 15-yard penalty makes it first and 25 from the 18-yard line. A delay to have Morris. Morris out across the 20 to the 21. Charlie Johnson, the nose tackle, will be credited with that tackle. And so the Cardinals trying to fight themselves out of a big hole right now. It's a dangerous situation for a young quarterback. Well, it is. I think both teams offensively have suffered by losing their uh, first-string quarterback. They look like they've lost some continuity. That's to be expected. Buffalo, Miami. Buffalo finally scored. Bowling hook. Hooks on a three-yard run, 17 to seven now. That's in the third quarter. Mel Gray, Pat Tilly, the wide receivers on a second and 21. Pazarkowitz has Gray. He's got it. Look out! He's off to the races. He's to the 30-yard line. Gray to the 20. He's going to take it all away. Touchdown! Mel Gray keeps his streak alive. He now has got a pass in 81 straight games, and that's a 78-yard touchdown. What a spectacular catch he makes on it. He goes right up and takes the ball away. Let's take a look at it. Markowitz throws the ball. Actually, before Gray makes his move, because it's a long throw. And watch him go up and catch the ball right. Took it right away from Wilson. And it's a long chase when you have to chase down Mel Gray. You know something? He hasn't had a touchdown catch in a long time. I think it was 22 games since he's had a touchdown catch and he got a big one there 78 yards point after attempt by steve little is on the way it's a 13 to 7 game as the cardinals erupt 
on a second and 21. Pazarkowitz hits Gray for 78 yards, and the Cardinals have the lead. Well, there he is. He's catching his breath. A 78-yarder and 81 straight games. That's kind of a sensational way to keep your streak going, isn't it? It's his effort. What a great play. Wally Henry. Well, the Cardinals leading at 13 to 7. Henry comes right back up the field. He's to the 24-yard line. Well, Gray has been hurt all year long. Hasn't been able to run full steam. But, boy, he took off that time. And now Ron Jaworski is coming back at quarterback. Jaworski, let's see how well he can continue with that injury. I think that 78-yard touchdown pass may have made a decision <laughs> to get him back in there. Well, I they definitely would like to play him if it's at all possible. And if he's it's not going to hurt himself by playing. That was only the ninth catch of the year from El Gray to show you he just hasn't been able to put it all together. But that will heal your wounds in a hurry. Got to do a lot to Steve Pesarkovic, too. From the 25-yard line, Carmichael jumps out at the bottom of the screen, split out. Jaworski giving off to Montgomery. Montgomery to the 25, across the 30 to the 31-yard line. Bob Pollard eventually ran him out of bounds. And so the Eagles trailing for the second time in this game. They trailed early 6 to nothing, and took the 7-6 lead. And that interception just before the end of the first half could prove to be a very big play, Sonny. Has to be a very big play because look at the momentum that would have given them in at halftime coming from behind the way they did. Well, Tampa Bay's 5-1, but they may be 5-2 and two in a minute here. Look at this. Tony Galbraith scored the second touchdown for New Orleans. Six-yard run, 14-7. Thanks for that excellent offense. Second down and four from the 31-yard line. Jaworski. Carmichael. Carmichael to 45 to 50. And so now, all of a sudden, they're going to their big money receivers, Gray and Carmichael, a 19-yard pickup to the midfield strike. They caught him in a good defense this time, and he throws, look how quickly he throws the ball. Right behind the linebacker, nobody covering him. Jaworski's tough. He played with a fractured finger this year. Now he's come back in with a foot injury. He's Wonder there. how this one hurt. He's a leader, too, Gary. They have to, they have to have him on the field. First down at the 50-yard line. I think his finger's recovered, and it feels <laughs> much better. <laughs> much better. Jaworski has two receivers put to the top of the screen. Montgomery almost didn't get that ball put away, and now he's to the 41-yard line, and the Eagles are storming back. That's going to be about a yard short of the first down. He stayed a great run right here. Watch this. He cuts back. He got some good blocking right there. It didn't look like he was going to make a lot of yards out of it, yet he picked up nine yards. At the 41, second down, a yard to go. There's the stats on Montgomery. He has two 100-yard days. We've been told now by our producer, Bob Rowe, that Jim Hart will not return to this game today. Ron Jaworski, of course, is back. Here is Montgomery trying to pick up the first down. Very close. Kurt Allerman making the tackle. Let's check up on the Patriots and Bears. The Bears have come back and got a touchdown. They were trailing two touchdown passes by Steve Grogan. Dave Williams on a 54-yard pass from Bob Abilini. Williams, the guy that's had to play all year at fullback. Roland Harper out for the year now. They lost also John Skabinski. Robin Earl did return. It is a first down now for Philadelphia at the 40. So the Eagles, I think, have stirred them up a little bit, that 70 yard, 78 yard touchdown. I think they're going to they're picking up a little bit offensively also with the return of uh, Jaworski. They realize they're going to have to play well, protect him. Gary Petz is in there for payroll, playing in the left guard position. He's 64. Is Ron Jaworski playing, I'm sure, with some pain. On the first down, Jaworski moving pretty well. Got time to throw. Harris doesn't see it. <laughs> Wasn't looking. Didn't expect it. That's kind of embarrassing, isn't it? And so to me, I'm not looking at you, huh? Take a look at this. He comes out to a little play action fake. Everybody was covered. Ron did the right thing and not going long. It looks like he takes his eyes off him and hits him right in the helmet. <laughs> he went away from him. He must have thought that Ron was going long, but just looking back like that. That'll keep you awake. He'll hate to look, look at that film this week, won't he? <laughs> right. There's the stats on Jaworski. He came in here ranked third in the NFC. Second and ten. 
Excellent protection. This time Harris has it. Harris against the grain to the 35, 34 yard line. It'll bring up third down, still four yards to go. Leroy Harris, who came to the Eagles for a seventh round draft pick, but he weighed about 235 pounds. He's now down to 223. He had a sore knee, which has come back, and he's playing like they expected him to play. I tell you, just watching uh, Ron Jaworski walk back in the huddle, he's limping more noticeably right now. There it is, third and four from the 34-yard line. It'd be a long field goal if they don't get it here. You don't know if it's out of the range of Franklin or not. He kicked two 60-yarders in one game against Baylor at Texas A&M. Jaworski, Carmichael, he has the first down. Wait a minute, they say he's out of bounds. He was out of bounds. Bud Wilkinson over there to be absolutely sure they were aware of that. And it's going to bring up fourth down, and here comes Franklin. Take a look at this. Got to have both feet in, in bounds. Up, he, put it, he picked his foot up to catch the ball and stepped on the sideline. That was a good call. And when you're six foot eight, you got a lot of body to keep in bounds. And there was a good example. He couldn't do it. Now, this kick is going to be a 51 yard attempt. For Franklin, it might be a chip shot. I'll tell you the way he's been kicking. Franklin's missed one today. He attempted one from 50 yards out. This kick is on the way. It's straight enough, and it is good. He just got it over. A 51-yarder. That's his longest of the year. Prior to that, he had a 48-yarder. And the rookie from Texas A&M has paid big, big dividends this year for Philadelphia. Franklin, after the 51-yard field goal, Franklin making a 13 to 10 game. Thomas Lott is back deep along with Willard Harrell for St. Louis. Franklin hits it high. This is going to be Harrell. Harrell up to the 20. That's it. At the 20-yard line. So Tony Franklin this year, nine field goals and 11 attempts. His longest of the year just a moment ago, 51 yards. But he didn't have a lot to spare, did he? I tell you what, if uh, it had to go 51 and a half, I don't know that he would have made it. Let's watch him now. How does he protect that bare foot he, when he kicks off? He's out of the way. Watch him. He goes down. He'll stop along here. Look at that style, would you? <laughs> That's what you call styling. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a 21. The Cardinals now with a three-point lead. Well, they're leading the NFL in turnovers, and there is a very costly one. On the other hand, the Eagles, they just don't make very many mistakes. They have made one in this game, though, a big interception right before the end of the first half. Last week, they didn't make any against Washington. Washington made one, and it cost them. Here comes Montgomery. Montgomery to the 20, the 15, the 10. He has a first down, a first and goal at the seven-yard line. You know, they had that play defense per perfectly and just the great running ability of Wilbert Montgomery, and he picks up a first down. Look, the man's got outside position. Neil does. There's the man. Carl Allen was forcing the play back in. He was in good position. That Montgomery gets the first down. Ken Stone with a tackle. New Orleans has bumped it up even further. Archie Manning hit Henry Childs with a 15-yarder for their third touchdown. Boy, they have an arsenal of receivers in New Orleans. First and goal now at the seven-yard line. Montgomery was 69 yards on 15 carries. And here he goes again to the five-yard line. The second and goal there. Jaworski limping, man. Look at him. See? <laughs> Boy, he is playing in pain. You have to admire him going out there. Takes courage. The game's tough enough to play as it is. Neal Williams on the last tackle. Back in a goal to five. Charlie Smith comes in now. Bagnola checks out. Giants. San Francisco and the Giants behind Sims. You see those highlights at halftime oh, on Sims? Is he playing well? They should have started off the season with him. 29 to 10 now they're leading San Francisco. Second and goal to five. Jaworski has two receivers put to the top of the screen and Carmichael and Smith gives to Montgomery. Montgomery in the five. He is in for the touchdown. Wilbert Montgomery who had four touchdowns last week takes this one in. And the Eagles have erupted here after going down 13 to 7. Again, I know it sounds redundant to continue to say this. Look, good position by everyone defensively. But you see what happens. You just, you have to tackle this man. Alleman slips off. He just breaks tackles and 
gets into the end zone. Five-yard run. Montgomery came in here with seven touchdowns for the year. So hard to tackle him, huh? You see, Allerman's a good tackler and just bounced off of him. Franklin to add the point after Shira to hold, and Tony Franklin has now made it a 17-13 game in favor of the Philadelphia Eagles. So a seesaw affair, and what an entertaining football game. A lot of it left. We still have 4.53 remaining in the third quarter of play as these teams have exploded here in the third quarter. Let's look ahead now. Next week's the halfway point of the 79 season, and Philadelphia against Washington again. They go right back against the Redskins after a week away from them. Green Bay, Tampa Bay, Chicago, Minnesota, and Detroit, New Orleans. And we're going to be at that Detroit-New Orleans game. Giants. Boy, they're a different football team now. Kansas City 4-2 and two going into today's activity. St. Louis and Dallas, that's always some struggle. And Atlanta, San Francisco. Seems like St. Louis never gets a break, huh? They got to go back and play Dallas now, and you, you don't know if Jim Hart will be available. I tell you, it's hard to believe that we are almost to the halfway point of the season. It's moving along, isn't it? Be sure now to consult your local listings and times in your area, and of course the NFL today gets it all underway. Let's check the Washington-Cleveland score. We have a change there. Cleveland got a 37-yard field goal by Don Cockroft. They lead 9-6 to six now. A field a, goal kicking contest, eh? Or I guess. 17-13 our score here. Franklin, the kickoff. Montgomery now has 76 yards in this game on 17 carries. This time it's going to be Thomas Lott, the rookie out of Oklahoma. And Lott lowers his head and makes it just short of the 25-yard line. Lott playing in place of Roy Green now, who's out. John Shira making the tackle for Philadelphia. That last drive after the fumble didn't take long. Five-yard run by Montgomery, batting the point. The turnovers last week, Washington threw the one interception, and it turned the game around. Renard Wilson picked it off, and the Eagles marched in. There's Jim Hart. He will not return. For today's game, they hope they have him ready against Dallas next week. There's Anderson carrying the 25. We've been told that the longest touchdown pass in St. Louis football history was Hart to Ahmad Rashad, 98 yards. You can't throw much further than that, can you? That was in 1972. He was the number one draft pick for the Cardinals. At that time, Bobby Moore, now Ahmad Rashad. On the 25-yard line, second down, nine. That's Paris in motion. Azarkowitz back. Gets it off behind Anderson, incomplete. Azarkowitz, again, having a tough time locating that swing man. He's having a tough time locating his receivers. There's pretty good coverage that time. The rush got to him, and he was just trying to dump it off to Anderson, but he threw it behind him. And the Eagles make about five defensive changes now on this apparent passing play of third and nine. Pizarkowitz is five of 14, 117 yards, but two interceptions. Well, this is a situation you try to avoid, Gary. It's throwing against their pass defense team. They put in their rushman. They put in an extra uh, back. John Shar comes in. Tough to throw against this defense. You don't think they don't have Mel Gray in their mind right now as he's lined up at the bottom of the screen. Third and nine. Gray's picked up by Herman Edwards. Pizarkowitz throws up the middle short. Intended receiver over the middle, the big tight end. That's Gary Paris. That'll bring up the fourth down. Again, Gray was really covered that time by Edwards. He was stride for stride with him. And so the Cardinals will have to kick the football. There's Paris, picked up this year after he was released by the Cleveland Browns. They've used him because he has better speed than Chandler does at that tight end spot, even though Chandler's an excellent blocker. I think he was open that time, but it looks to me like uh, Steve pulled a string on the ball a little bit and guided it instead of just letting it go. Wally Henry back, little to kick. His second of the afternoon, and he hits a dandy. Beautiful kick. Henry from the 29-yard line. And he's going to make it out to the 38. Very fine kick that time by Little making the tackle Rod Phillips, the former Los Angeles Ram. And so the Eagles, with their lead of 17-13, will have it after a nine-yard return, a 41-yard punt. 
next Saturday at 4.30 Eastern on the CBS Sports Spectacular, the 1979 World Amateur Roller Skating Championship from West Germany and the World's Strongest Men. Well, that roller skating is really getting big in the country, isn't it? It really is. Well, it may be the fastest growing sport in the United States. They're trying to get it included in the Olympics in 1984. First down from the 37 is where they're going to mark it. There's Jaworski. He was hurt in the first half, but he's come back. Quick pitch, Montgomery flag on the play. Montgomery breaks, tackles to the 50, 45. Ken Stone is over there and knocks him out of bounds. But we said there is a flag. Who's it against? I'm not going to guess right now, and it's going to be a legal procedure against Philadelphia. That was a 30-yard run brought back. That would have put Montgomery over 100 yards. I tell you, it's worth taking a look at anyway. You just see it. It's fun to watch this man play football. Boy, Stan Walters pulls out and makes a real fine block at the line of scrimmage. And there again, you just see this driving, churning little leg. Boy, and he just fouls his way by. Kenny Stone Still finally runs him out of bounds. Tackle was uncovered. Still first down. What was that? Tackle was uncovered. They think he backed off the line a little bit. You have to stay up on the line of scrimmage. Seven men have to be along that front. And he may have set back a little too far. He just ran through the arms of Worley. Montgomery is 5'10", 195. Great leg drive, and what an attitude this guy has. In his third year, last year gained 1,220 yards. Mishandled, snap, and the Cardinals have an opportunity. So they've evened up. That's one of the few mistakes the Eagles will give you, and right now the Cardinals will have the ball at the 30-yard line. Let's see what happens here, see if we can pick it up. Oops, just didn't get the handle on it. Guy Morris, Jaworski, just couldn't come up with a handle. Hard to tell. Looked like Kurt Allerman had gotten there. Or Eric Williams, 55. Both of them pounced in the near vicinity of the ball. And the Cardinals will get the ball at the 31. So a very similar fumble with the Cardinals had earlier. Uncharacteristic of the Philadelphia Eagles. That's two turnovers by him. Anderson and Brown now, the running back. This is Anderson, Anderson to the 25, 23 yard line. He is excited and he carries the football and those linemen know that just a brush block, just any kind of block sometimes could be the difference when he's carrying it. Look at that Cardinal defense for 18 fumbles this season. You know who leads in that department? Tampa Bay. They have some defense, don't they? Tampa Bay had forced 22 prior to the start of today's action. I don't know. Ask, ask Archie Manning that, Jerry. He, they got 21 points this far. <laughs> Second do. down. F2. That defense may have gone to sleep today. Here's Anderson trying to go wide. Look at that foot fake he put on him. To the 20, and that's the first down. Boy, he really made a cut then, didn't he? Bobby Howard had him dead to right. You see, if you pick it up, he runs right at Bobby Howard. No blocking in front of him. You watch him, he has him, and he just gives him a little wiggle and goes by him. Bunning to Tolo. Got Bob Young coming out. He's hurt. George Collins replaces him. He and the Otis Brown, there's that move. Isn't that oh, something? Look at that. <laughs> Where did he go? The inside out, won't it? Where did he go, huh? First down at the 20. As we mentioned, Young is out. Collins is in. Here's Anderson again. Anderson running behind the block. And I don't know where they're going to mark it. About at the 15 yard line. A little uh, discussion going on between Harrison and Anderson. A friendly pat. I don't know how friendly it was, but it was a pat. <laughs> it's going to bring up now second down, five yards to go at the 15-yard line. Anderson now starting to pick up some yardage. He has 64 yards on 16 carries. He's had to work for him, though, after that first week. And he got 193 yards. And had that beautiful 76-yard run. He's had to kind of hammer away. His long runs are far between. Here's Anderson again going wide. Got a yard, and that's all. Very good reaction that time by Philadelphia. Wait a minute. Anderson's getting up very slowly now. We have been told that Bob Young's injury was a pulled hamstring, and that's an injury he had trouble with a year ago. And Anderson's limping a little bit. Is that going to hurt him in a strongman contest? <laughs> you know he holds a world record in the deadlift of 1,410 pounds, Bob Young does. There he is. 
taking some of the tape off. Wayne Morris is in. Harris comes out of the game. They have a full backfield, a full house backfield on a third and four. Pazarkowicz with a blitz, gets away from Humphrey, delivers the ball, and it's caught by Theotis Brown. Did he get the first down? That was a pretty good play by Theotis Brown, not to mention Pazarkowicz. Pazarkowicz really has to get away from Claude Humphrey here. Humphrey takes an inside, and look at him. He's back there before Steve gets back there. He does a good job avoiding him. Those balls could be very close to the first down. I think he's a little short. He is short, Sonny. It's a fourth down. He's a half yard short. Brown has been an excellent receiver for this team. And now they're going to have fourth down. They're going to go for it at the 11 yard line. Pizarro is 6 of 16 now, 120 yards in the passing department. Showing a very good ability to move with the football. Here we go. Big play. They're going to go to the big guy, Brown, and he's got it. And that has been the man as a rookie that they've depended upon time and time again on the goal line and on short yardage situations, and he delivers. I take good blocking on that left side of the line, and Brown picks up the first down. Keith Workman, really a fine block that time. You're seeing a lot of football. The ball at the nine, first and goal now for St. Louis, as we have less than 30 seconds remaining in the third quarter. 17 to 13. The Eagles with the lead. Mazarkowicz gives off again to Brown. He's at the five, and he'll be shoved back. Second and goal there, and that'll be the last play of this third quarter. You see, they're just trying to grind it in there. They're going behind the blocking of George Collins and Keith Workman on that side. Takes it down to the five as the third quarter ends. That is the end of the third quarter with the score, Philadelphia 17, St. Louis 13. We now pause for a word from your local station. Well, there's Bob Young, Sonny, with the hamstring injury. You imagine how much bandage and how much tape they have to have <laughs> to wrap that thigh. Look at that arm. His arm's as big as my leg. Well, he's out. He will not return with that hamstring injury. As we mentioned, he had trouble with that all last year. Look at the time in possession. St. Louis still on top. A lot of that coming in that first quarter. A seesaw game and a lot happening. We have 15 minutes remaining. Here's the situation. Second and goal at the five. The Cardinals trailing 17-13. With Arkowitz in the second half in the absence of Jim Hart through a 78-yard touchdown pass. To Mel Gray, and then Franklin kicked a 51-yarder. Montgomery scored on a five-yard run. We've had a lot of offense in the third quarter. Let's check the Saints game again. They just continue to score points. 28 to 7. Boy, I tell you, some offense. Tony Galbraith, he's got his second touchdown of the day. What is happening here? Jim Tunney, the referee, visiting with uh, Bud Wilkinson. It's some uh, concern, and he came over, and he's calling somebody to get some verification on some ruling. Hmm. We'll try to find out what uh, the delay is and why Tony came over to make the call. Maybe he just had a long-distance call, I think. <laughs> His wife reminded him to stop by and pick up a gallon of milk after the game. Let's see. Maybe he'll explain it to us. You know, we should congratulate Keith Crepe. He became a father on Friday night. Brian. His wife, Sandra, had a little boy named Brian. That's right. That's their first uh, young one, and we do congratulate them. And Keith's having an excellent year at tight end. John yeah. Shira's wife had a baby, I think, the day Michelle, of the Pittsburgh yeah. game. Yeah. yeah. I had a little girl named Christine. Kristen. Kristen. Well, Jim, what are you doing down there? I don't know. Now they're going to somebody else is coming over. So they're explaining it to Bud Wilkinson now. Bud listening to why, what, and when. All right, Jim, let's hear it. <laughs> I don't think he's going to explain it to us. <laughs> now Dick Vermeil wants to know what's going on. I'd like to find out what's going on. We're going to hear now from... Now, this is interesting. Now, I've never heard this. Dick Vermeil's headset, his communications with the press box, have gone out. 
And so the league rules indicate if one goes out, the other must quit using their headsets, the other team. <laughs> and so both now are going without communications to the press box. I don't think I've ever heard of that. Second and goal at the five. Anderson, and he went nowhere. It's third and goal. Charlie Johnson, 65, reacted on that play. The Otis Brown will now come in for St. Louis. Paris will come out. A big play now. A third and goal at the five. Have you ever heard of that? I didn't know that. Well, Bud Wilkinson doesn't wear one. I notice there's a coach standing next to him right now. It still has his headset on, and he's talking to the press box. Maybe it was just for meal. Wanted his headset hooked up also. Here we go. Third and goal at the five. The full house backfield. Anderson, Brown, and Wayne Morris behind Pazarkowitz. He's going to throw it. He's got his man at the goal line. Theodis Brown. He didn't get in, I don't believe. Are they going to mark it? It'll be fourth and goal. He's inside the one-yard line. As he throws it, same kind of play earlier that John Walton had intercepted. He throws out. They deny him the goal line. It's going to be go right at the one-yard line, and I think they're going for it. Big decision. Bud Wilkinson, Wayne Putnam, the offensive line coach who was with the Eagles a year ago, and now St. Louis is going to call for a timeout. They use their first. This was Arkowitz. Comes to the near sideline at the 13:44 mark. Well, if you speculate about it, if you would kick the field goal, you're still down by one point, so why not go for exactly it? Exactly right. So we'll be back as we take a break from the action here at Bush Stadium. 17-13, the Eagles. Bud Wilkinson, Jim Hart ended their discussion with Steve Pazarkowitz. He's back on to the playing field. It's fourth and goal at the one-yard line. The Cardinals down 17-13. 13.44 to go, fourth quarter, and you can see a very nervous Dick Vermeil as the Cardinals are going for it. Lazarkowitz, quick pitch, Anderson, touchdown. I like that call. Very strange call, though. Real unusual goal line play. Unusual goal line play. The flip. He flipped the ball out. He got good blocking that time. Excellent blocking by Gary Paris. And that's all Otis Anderson needs is just a little bit of room. And so the seesaw battle now swings in favor of the Cardinals. They lead it 19 to 17. Point after attempt coming up. The big one because of the field goal situation. And the Cardinals with a three-point lead now. 20 to 17. And this is so characteristic of this struggle through the years between Philadelphia and St. Louis. They've always been struggles like this, and today certainly no exception. There's the drive after the fumble. Anderson scoring his third touchdown of the year. Wally Henry with the kickoff now from Steve Little. 20, 17. We've had just about everything happen in this football game and still have over 13 minutes left to play. A little kicking, and this is a dandy. Henry at the one-yard line. Wally Henry out to the 15, to the 20, 30-yard line. He's out to the 40, to the 45-yard line. Wally Henry, he's upset at himself, but well, what an effort. Rod Phillips eventually made the tackle. What a great run back. He's really... He gets into his blocking well and breaks tackles. That's the thing. He, he's not ready to concede and go down when he gets closed in on. And boy, he gets the Eagles back in great field position again. And that's a 45-yard <laughs> return. They're not far from Franklin field goal range, are they? At the 46-yard line. There he is, Wally Henry. They call him Hollywood Henry. Played for Dick Vermeil on that outstanding Rose Bowl team at UCLA. Montgomery trying to go wide, and he's being chased down by Calvin Favron. Rookie did a good job getting out there, but still Montgomery got two yards on it. And Favron had him in the backfield. That's right. Had him full off. There's your worst. You know, last week he had 8 of 12. Again, he's not throwing the ball all that much, but he's throwing it effectively. Picking his spot. Now, you're talking about these two teams, how tough the games are when they play. 
the Cardinals, what are they? They've won 11 out of the last 13 games against the Eagles. That's right. In fact, they had nine straight against Philadelphia until a year ago here in Bush Stadium. And they've always come down to a big play late in the game. Back to throw, Joe Warski. Dumps it off to Leroy Harris, and he doesn't have it. He's having a tough time with that football. Yeah, he is. He was looking where he was going to run with the ball. Took his eye off of it. John Bearfield putting some pretty good pressure on that time. And so it'll bring up a third and eight. All right, as you can see, Vermeil's communications have been restored, so both teams now have communications with the press box. Well, I'm glad they got it straightened out. Well, third down now, eight yards to go. Scott Fitzke, the rookie out of Penn State, number 81 is in, along with Charlie Smith, top of the screen, Carmichael at the bottom of the screen. Let's see if they come after it. Jaworski back. Over the middle, Crepley, and it's picked off instead by Smith. Two men in the same area. Well, Crepley was trying to clear the area, and he didn't. He got jammed going up the field a little bit. He's going off the field right now, and uh, the ball was delivered. Either guy could have caught the football. Charlie Smith came across and made the reception. You can see, looks like the ball is going to Crepley, and Smith came right underneath and picked it off. First down. Well, the Eagles, they're moving again. Smith with his 11th catch of the year. Jaworski limping as he walks to his position behind the center. Comes through with a 19-yard completion. First down at the 33 of St. Louis. 12 minutes remaining in the game. Montgomery wide. He's in trouble. Gets credit to Eric Williams, 55. Boy, he does a good job. That That's time. not Williams. John Bearfield yes, comes sir. across and makes that play. You see, and he this time holds on. Harris did not make the block. He did not block him because he didn't expect the penetration by Bearfield. That was Bearfield, not Williams. And Bearfield is the man who just seems to be getting better every week. A second round draft pick a year ago. He called himself Dr. Doom. Came in here. And really did not contribute that much to the team. This year he came in very quietly and has been playing with a lot of authority. Second down, 11, a loss of one. Jaworski back, time to throw. Harris, Harris drops immediately by Favron, and that'll still be short of the first down by some three, maybe four yards. Keith Crepley has left the field also now. Uh, John Spagnola, the big tight end, the rookie from Yale, is in there playing that position now. Boy, is he big. 6'4", 240. He was the ninth-round pick of New Orleans, or I should say New England, and they picked him up after he was cut, and they like him. Inside the 32. Third down, three. Another third down for the Eagles. Smith. Carmichael split out wide. As Sonny mentioned, Spagnola in a tight end. Quick pitch, Montgomery. And he cuts it against the grain, and he got a first down. That is what Montgomery does as well as anybody, is cutting against the grain, and he didn't have running room, and he found some. It looks like this play had been stuffed by Bearfield just early. They come right back to the same play. Very basic. It looks like he's going to come up short of the first down. You see him break the tackle again. Kurt Alleman had him again short of the first down. He broke it. Keeps the drive alive. First down on the 20-yard line. Look at that. Fourth in the NFC in ball control. Montgomery now with 84 yards. First down at the 20-yard line. Inside, 10 minutes to go. Each time the Cardinals have taken the lead, the Eagles have just come right back at them. Jaworski, Montgomery, Montgomery to the 15. Montgomery is to the 12-yard line going to be two maybe three yards short of the first down he's been a workhorse well what just he gets some good blocking this time Gary Pett pulls out and is leading him he follows right behind him cuts back almost another first down also Leroy Harris with a big block we have a final now Miami well how many times have they beaten Buffalo 17 to 7 that's the final do you realize what Cincinnati's beating Pittsburgh 34 to 3 Boy, that Central Division now is up for grabs in the AFC, isn't it? From the 12-yard line, three yards to go on a second down, straight up the middle, and they have a first and goal. The Eagles pick up the first and goal with still a lot of time left in this game. Well, he gave, gave Montgomery a playoff here. He gave it to Harris. Anytime you 
you give it to Harris. He's got to be running free a little bit. He found some daylight up front, plowed in there, and picked up a first down, makes it first and goal on about the seven-yard line. Harris, very important to this Eagle offense because Dick Vermeil uses his fullback a lot. He uses them as blockers, receivers, and they had a good one last year in Mike Hogan. Harris now has filled his shoes. First and goal at the eight-yard line. Jaworski to Montgomery. Montgomery to the five. Inside the five to the three-yard line. It'll be second and goal there. Have a fourth-quarter score. We're looking to it's all over. That team was 5-0, and 35-7. Oh, New Orleans was 2-4 and four going into that game. Ron Jankowski now comes in defensively for St. Louis on this goal line. Second and goal at the two-yard line, just outside it. Allerman comes out in place of Jankowski. Montgomery trying to take it in, and he fumbled the ball. He fumbled the ball, and the Cardinals have downed it, and they'll have it at the 20-yard line. Can you believe that? I want to see that Fumble again. The ball. That's two touchdowns. Let's take a look right here. I've never seen the Eagles make so many mistakes. He looks like he's going to get into the end zone. He's going down. He's got the ball protected. We lose him right there. And Hagen there it comes. It comes out of there. He didn't get across the goal line. If he had been across the goal line and fumbled, it would have been a touchdown. And the man that comes up with it, Kenny Stone. Boy, he is an opportunistic football player. At the 20-yard line, the Cardinals get a new lease on life. Took six minutes, 11 seconds only to culminate in a fumble in the end zone. Look at the turnovers by the Eagles. That's unheard of for them. Four. Anderson and Morris are running back from the 20, the Cardinals. Pazarkowitz off to Anderson. Anderson trying to go wide. Nothing doing. He loses a yard or two. Green jerseys everywhere on that one. He started the game running right. He's never been able to go off the left side effectively. One reason is Reggie Wilk. Wilkes again on that tackle. Hey, every time he touches it, though, you got to expect him to go all the way. You see Collins, 66. He's still in there in place of the injured Bob Young. Anderson, 64 yards on 20 carries. Montgomery, by the way, on that last play on the fumble, now has 98 yards on 23 carries. Second down, 12. Up the middle, Anderson. Look at that cut, would you? Oh, oh, oh. what a pretty run, wasn't it? Beautiful move. Boy, that was such a pretty make move that he makes it. It's a draw play. Goes, goes back, takes the pass, and just watch him cut up. Here's his cut right here. Warm. <laughs> it's like he put it in overdrive, doesn't he? Looks like he gets in a little groove there, yeah. and it just opens up for him. Now 73 yards for O.J. Houston to Baltimore, third quarter score. Earl Campbell scored another touchdown. 20 yard of this time. He has two for the day. And the big day. 6-17 left in this one. Third down three for Steve Pazarkowitz and the Cardinals. They lead it 20-17. to Pazarkowitz gives to Morris, and he's dropped immediately by Charlie Johnson. Johnson was there almost as quick as the exchange. And that'll mean a kicking situation now for the Cardinals. Little will come in. You don't hear a lot about Johnson, but the football Cardinals staff was very impressed with him. They talked a lot about him. He's kind of one of those unheralded players who comes up with a big play once in a while, just like that one. He's a Vietnam veteran. Two years in the Army. He was an MP over there in Vietnam. I don't imagine too many people argued with him. Good punting day for Steve Little. But this man that's kicking too, Wally Henry. Look out. Anything can happen when he gets it. Time of 5.29 left in the game. On a fourth and seven. Little to kick inside his own 10. A high snap. Nice kick. Henry going to call for the fair catch, and the ball is going to roll down to the 31-yard line. We have a flag all the way back inside the 20-yard line. What they do, Rush? Uh-oh. Holding. Again, St. Louis. That was a 48-yard punt by Steve Little, but they're going to have to do it again. He's going to make him kick it again. Back him up, make him kick it again. You know, Wally Henry wanted to feel that ball. One of his own teammates got him in a little bit of difficulty over there, and he got away from it probably very wisely. 
Anyway, a 10-yard penalty means that Little's going to be kicking from his own goal line. 36, 10 yards. A little trouble with the mic, but I believe he said 36, Rod Phillips. St. Louis, seven penalties, 65 yards. New England leading Chicago. John Smith got the 21-yard field goal. There's Hart visiting with Pazarkowicz. 17 to 7 now they're leading them. Huh? Here's Little kicking from the end zone. Henry standing at the 50 yard line. Little hits up Boomer. Oh, did he hit that one? Henry back at the 35 yard line. He's got some running room. 50, 45, 40. He's to the Cardinal 33 yard line. What a run by Wally Henry. Again, he's upset he didn't go all the way. And he has been one of the big performers in this game today. With 4.58 left, the Eagles have the football. That was a 54-yard kick, and here is the situation. With 4.58 remaining, the Eagles down by 3, 20 to 17. They had the ball at the 33-yard line. It was a 54-yard kick by Little, but I should add it was a 34-yard return by Wally Henry. He's going to be leading the NFC in putt returns after today. Here is Montgomery. Montgomery to the 30, the 25. He has a first down to the 21-yard line. Montgomery now over 100 yards for the day. His third 100-yard day of the season. Same play they've been running. Fake up the middle to Harris. Pitch back to Montgomery. And give that eagle line credit. Boy, they just doing an outstanding job of blocking. Gary Pets again out in front of the play. Dan i tell you what, fine blocking at them. The 22-yard line, fourth quarter now. The Saints are really hammering Tampa Bay. 42 to 7. Montgomery with 109 yards, adds some more. He's down to the 13-yard line. They just can't get this guy right now. They can't seem to one-on-one -on -one make a tackle. Watch him stumble right when he gets the ball here. He stumbles right here. Oh, hold on, I'm not quite ready to run. Now he finds his balance. He gets all the way to the secondary again. Walters, Pet, Morris, Peoples, all doing a fine job up front. Jerry Sassmore. Giants, well, 49ers are putting some points on the board. We have a second down here, a short two to go. Smith, Carmichael, the wide receiver. And Jaworski keeping, and I don't think he wanted to do this. He is dropped by Carl Allen. What happened on that? A, a busted play. It was just a busted play. And with the injury he has, that's the last thing he wanted to be doing is running and having somebody come after him. And that could be very costly. Now it's third down and four instead of second and a short two. Back went the wrong way. Either he went the wrong way or Montgomery went the wrong way. But again, another mistake by the Philadelphia Eagles in scoring territory. And do they throw him down? They don't. They don't take any prisoners when they see that quarterback with the ball. Third down and four. They don't get it here. Franklin then would have to go for the tying field goal. Jaworski back. He's got a man open. Far side is Campfield. And Campfield has it, I believe. <laughs> he backed off for the first down. One time trying to get more yards. He backed up. Did you see that? Let's see if he take got it. Take a look at this. I think he's going to pick up the first down, but he came very close to losing the first down. Watch him after he catches. He has the first down there, but he'll back up. He backs up. If they had made the tackle, then they'd have set up a fourth down play. That's Perry Smith that bumped him out. But it is a first down, but not by a lot. It certainly wasn't. Cincinnati still leading that one. 34 to 10. Are they put it on him? Bradshaw hit John Stallworth. The ball is just inside the 12-yard line. First down. This is Campfield again. Second-year man from Kansas to the five. Touchdown. Billy Campfield went in on his feet. And he's a man you don't hear a lot about, but they're very high on him, and he gives Montgomery a breather, and he takes over. And look at Jaworski. And the last time, i tell you something. Every time he comes in, he came in and ran a 15-yarder earlier in the year for a touchdown. He knows where the end zone is and how quickly the Eagles strike. And so it's a 23-20 game and a battle, and what a battle we've had. Back and forth, and now point after temp. A big one, obviously. 
as this would keep the Cardinals with an opportunity from tying it up with a field goal. 2.54 left in the game. Franklin's kick is on the way, and he had that one easily. Tony Franklin makes it 24 to 20, and the Cardinals once again are going to have to come from behind as you have to hand it to this Eagles team, they've had all kinds of opportunities slip away, and yet they still have a four-point lead. They've had an interception in the end zone, a fumble into the end zone, four turnovers, and still with a four-point lead. Well, tonight, 60 minutes. And an interesting story. Do you want to borrow a couple of million dollars in interest rates so low your banker would laugh at you? It's not all that difficult. Ask Uncle Sam. A lot of people who already are millionaires did just that, and they got the money. Watch it tonight on 60 Minutes. Franklin now to kick from the 35-yard line. And the Cardinals, well, they've had the big plays today. They're going to have to come up with some now. There's still time, 254. Trailing 9-6 to six with 27 seconds left. Joe Theismann hits Clarence Harmon as they come from behind to beat Cleveland 13 to 9. Boy, that really gets the Eagles in excellent shape now. They're 5 and 2 for the year. I say the Eagles are Redskins. Here's Franklin kicking off. Thomas Lutt, he's not going to bring it out. And so at the 20 yard line, the Cardinals will have it. Steve Pazakowicz has done a very commendable job. We'll come back in at quarterback. There's that last drive. And Canfield taking it over from 12 yards out. Boy, and that costly penalty, I tell you, after the fair catch, and they had the ball way back and then gave Wally Henry that opportunity for the big punt return. Wally Henry right now is about as effective at returning the football as anybody in this league. Jaworski, by the way, has only 95 yards passing, but he had 11 of 17. His percentage continues to be excellent. From the 20-yard line. Mazarkowicz on first down. Protection's good. Pat Tilly's there. Tilly has a first down catch at the 38-yard line. And he had something on that football. Bernard Wilson making the tackle. You can see right here, it's the same pass pattern that Mel Gray went 78 yards on earlier. A crossing pattern. You see him coming across. This time, Bernard Wilson is right there to make the play. 19-yard pickup. They mark the ball at the 39 with 218. You see it in the upper right-hand portion of your screen. On the first down, Pizarkowicz in a little bit of trouble. He throws it to Anderson. Almost intercepted. The flag is thrown. Anderson had a hand on it. Now, what's the flag all about? I don't know. He took a long time to throw this ball. They may get him for roughing the quarterback. Let's see what happens here. He goes back. He looks. Doesn't have anybody. There he has the man open. He sees him late. I think they're going to call face masking on him. That's right, and it'll be a first down. First down. Number 68. Ball is returning to the line of scrimmage. First down. Dennis Harrison, the guilty one. So it's now come to a first down at the 38-yard line. The penalty, St. Louis again leading in that department. They did last week. They did two weeks ago. It's been a heavily penalized team. Jim Childs is now checked in. Childs along with Tilly, the wide receivers. Last week, Childs had four catches against Houston for 58 yards. Almost jumping off his shoes and a flag on the play. They may have jumped off. Mazarkowitz steps up. Tilly, he made the catch. What a catch by Tilly at the 42-yard line. Now let's see what the flags are about. Boy, does that ball well caught by Tilly at 20-yard completion. Let's see if it's going to count. Flags down. I think it's against the Eagles. Offside against Philadelphia. And they'll obviously refuse that. And so the Cardinals are still alive. They certainly are. You take a look, you see right there, the man that jumps offside, Ken Clark. What the dark goes back to a little hole there, but watch his catch by Matt Tilly. Boy, that is something, isn't it? This concentration. Man worked so hard after every practice, 
to make catches just exactly like that one. Two-minute warning. And today's game from Bush Stadium, produced on CBS by Robert Rowe. Robert Rowe. Directed by Jim Tillman, associate producer Vince Lennon, engineer in charge Wilbur Allmeyer, our technical director Tom Martin, audio Ralph Day. And they've had an exciting game to help create here today, haven't they? Boy, a lot of good shots, too. We thank them for that. Good camera work. Atlanta versus Oakland on most of these CBS stations. Pazarkowicz with 157 left in the game as a first down at the 42. That last catch, by the way, by Tilly gives him four for a total of 62 yards. He's always worked, as you said. Washington did beat Cleveland. That's the final now, 13 to nine on that last second pass to Clarence Harmon. Boy, what a game that'll be next week between Philadelphia and Washington in the nation's capital. First down at the 42 yard line, Pazarkowicz back over the middle. Oh, he hit it and a flag is thrown. A catch was made, but almost at the same moment, dumped was Gary Parrish, the tight end. Bernard Wilson. Well, he, he saw that play coming, and he had a long run at that uh, Gary Parrish that time. He started waving the secondary coming. They well, they picked, they picked up the flag, didn't they? I don't know they what did. that is. Anyway, on the play, they lost about five yards, second and 15. Dave Steep has checked in for the Cardinals. He gets it off to Wayne Morris, one-on-one -on -one to Al Latimer. And he's to the 45, a gain of two. It's third down. Boy, Boy, the Eagles reacted well there. Latimer made an excellent play then. Rookie out of Clemson. We did a good job then. And so we have a timeout called by St. Louis. They have one timeout remaining. 133 left here at Bush Stadium. There's the timeouts remaining for St. Louis. They have a third and 13 from the 45 of Philadelphia down by four, 24 to 20. They've got to get the touchdown, the field goal of no value. Zarkowitz on the third down. Pressure put on. He eludes it. And it almost is intercepted by Al Latimer. Zarkowitz tried to take something off of the football when he was scrambling around. His intended receiver was Anderson. That'll bring up a fourth down. Now, are they going to go for it now, or are they going to kick and hope to get the football back? they got to go for it. They think they're going to have to go for it. Let's go to a final score, and what a shocker that is. <laughs> Boy, is it ever. 34 to 10? Mm. And this is just about as shocking. <laughs> Didn't expect that. That offense of New Orleans certainly got rolling against the best defense in the league, didn't they? All right, here we go. Fourth down, 13. The last gasp effort here for the Cardinals with 125 left in the game. Azarkowitz. Look out. He's in all kinds of trouble. He comes out of it. He may get a first down. Did he? He dies. I believe. I believe he got it. Let's see. <laughs> Where are they going to mark it? I don't know. Now, they may have moved the ball back a little bit. If they did, I don't think he got it. Let's see. Boy, is it close, ever so close. It looks like he's going to get trapped back here. He runs in behind his own people, scrambles running, dodging, and he dives. And he didn't get it. And he did not. Come. Look how close it is. Well, you got to give Pazarkowitz a lot of credit, though. He gave it his best shot, but just. I don't know. I did not see the measurement. There were too many bodies in front of the chains there, but it had to be about as close, maybe by an inch or two. Well, was it ever so close? It was less than a ball length. Timeouts. Well, you see, Philadelphia has three, but the Cardinals only with one and one fifteen remaining. A tough situation now for St. Louis. Well, they got, excuse me, Gary. They're going to force the Cardinals to use their timeout right here, so the Cardinals will be out of timeouts after this play. Everybody in tight. Jaworski drops to an E, and they'll stop it. Timeout called. Still running. 109. Where is their timeout? 107, 6, 5, 4. I don't see any <laughs> timeout yet. There they go. Well, wait a minute. They're going to let him go another play and then call it. <laughs> well, they're going to have to use it. Huh. All they have to do is go. Eagles can content just to stand there and let the 30-second clock catch them. They're going to use game. it all. That's right, the delay of game. I want to thank our spotter, Tom Redman, and our statistician, Steve Bear, for a job very well done. 
So it's 39 seconds. They're going to take a delay a game, I believe. It's second down, 12. Three seconds, two, one. No, they got it off just in time before the 30-second clock ran out. And there with 30 seconds, they use their last timeout. So with 30 seconds left, it's third down, 13 for the Eagles. When we return, Philadelphia hanging on to that four-point lead. Immediately following this game, Atlanta and Oakland on many of these same CBS stations. Here is Jaworski dropping to the knee with 30 seconds. There's no timeouts remaining, and this game is over. As you can see, they're shaking hands. And now, the best start since 1961 for the Eagles has moved to 6-1 and one for the year. They moved to Washington, who won today. They're 5-2, and two, and they're going to have another big showdown next Sunday. Boy, they, they made some mistakes. They one mistake last week against the Eagles, and it cost them the football game, and it's going to be some game in Washington. And the Cardinals 2-5 and five will go against Dallas, who plays Los Angeles tonight. This is Jerry Bender for Sonny Jurgensen saying so long from Bush Stadium, where our final score, the Philadelphia Eagles 24, the St. Louis Cardinals 20. Stay tuned as the NFL Today continues after this word from your local station.